here but um like in, in the crescent neighborhood where you guys still live and like dude like i i, I can still get that sleaze, yeah. like that I, we used to order from there we used to fucking have it delivered yeah like yeah i mean this, like yeah. It, it's solid pizza yeah. so but yeah. you're telling me freaking Sazer, the re, the Ronde, the reservoir yes. lounge yeah. is so straight up this guy will go to war <laughs> <laughs> so, so i've never had it all the times we've been there i'm just like eh, give me the that, sandwich give me that the chicken place sandwich. It's uh, it back in the Dizzy, it used to be some kind of crazy Italian restaurant before it got turned into. This is like the 90s, back in like the early 90s, okay, or, and before. Apparently, the people that ran that place, it was basically a mob front, but they made this killer pizza that came over from the old world, the recipe for the crust or some so shit. So, there's a whole okay? legend about this, all right. And then when these guys <laughs> bought it, part of the sale was that they bought it and with the sale came the crust recipe so they bought the thing that that's what i've heard yeah <laughs> so they bought the secret okay they bought the secret thing no, just the crust not the sauce so, or, so, or whatever the, the okay. whole rat of speed of crust okay so then is it like a thin crust is it like a, like what kind of what's the what's the make it's of a this? medium thin crust it's not like a thin crust yeah. it's just a regular nice crust a nice the perfect sauce not it's not sweet i'm not a fan of the sweet sauce it's a fucking like uh uh-huh. i don't know tangy <laughs> <laughs> well I, mean, I was thinking like dude should i bring a pizza on the way home so like you you might have just changed my game for later so this, yeah this is good go there dude that's our go-to we go there fucking all the time and and when well i was saying we just moved we were like right around the corner so we were oh, going, so, you, so you know yeah. that neighborhood well then so we were going there and right across the street is graden's you ever been to graden's yeah, and there's yep. uh uh the new creston brewery yep. is right there do you guys you ever know? go to gaia you guys even the uh, we've been there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what, and that's what yeah. everybody says. Yeah. Yeah. But they have the best. The old one. That's the one I've been to. Okay. And like, the, and they still haven't changed. It's kind of the same, you know, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, my favorite thing is they still have the cookies. They have the best cookies in all of, in, in, the, <laughs> in all of the earth. Like they have this chocolate chip oatmeal, like cookie that like I have fucking dreams about. Nice. So like, like, <laughs> like. So my gar- my girlfriend goes to the library and brings me back these cookies. But like, dude, when I first moved to Grand Rapids, I would get these cookies all the time, and it was such a like a good feeling to know that I can get a Rinaldi slice and a Gaia cookie, and it's like 2004 again. Like, yeah. so. <laughs> you see him in the back there just busting open Pillsbury's cans. <laughs> <laughs> good enough. All right, motherfuckers, listen up. We are back for episode 30. Round of applause. Anybody? Epic 30. Anybody? Uh, <laughs> um, the last week, the show got canceled because of the fucking snowpocalypse here. So we had fucking uh, my boys that play in a metal band in Detroit were coming over and they couldn't make it because of the snowpocalypse. So we canceled. But I got them rescheduled. So we're going to fucking. So anyway, we're back. Episode 30 with us today in the pod lounge. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. He is. <laughs> drum roll, please. I should have brought you out a snare drum. Right, you can just right. do your own. <laughs> this guy is the drummer from the legendary band, The Cosmic Rendezvous. <laughs> yeah, yes. I've had that one in my back pocket all week. Dude. <laughs> I just found a cassette tape recently. That's nice, 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 nice. Hell yeah, we got to get that going. Uh, Rick was just messaging me like, "Do you have any of the old high school stuff and whatever?" And like, so yeah, we got to get. We should put together a compilation of all the old bands oh, from man. back in the day and shit. That would just be funny to get everyone together just to hang out. And yeah, just, like, for, well, for real. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Rick was on, but uh, but not to get too far away, he is the drummer of the actually legendary band <laughs> mustard plug who we all fucking love and also you're playing in bonehawk right it's true you're yeah. still playing in bonehawk right i am yep. yeah I've, yep. i'm a big bonehawk fan as far as like i haven't seen you guys play live mm-hmm. but i see you guys posting and because you were posting i checked it out and like that's that's more of my alley man sure I, you know I, I, i'm just a big I, fucking fan of that shit yeah. i was like i think i told you i was like god damn it's good to see some fucking rock <laughs> some rock and roll happening yeah i mean i mean it's a uh, like uh, 
dual guitar like driving band that yeah. I mean if you like I don't know Black Sabbath yeah it's and sludgy and, like, and Motorhead heavy. yeah but you like a little bit of like maybe the Black Keys a little bit mm-hmm. like I mean there's some melody and groove in there yeah but it yeah. just like rocks and like we also love Thin Lizzy so like yeah I mean that's yeah. I mean which is like completely the opposite of what Mustard Plug does and so it, it kind of lets mm-hmm. me like do a bunch of stuff so. hell yeah it's yeah, like just... a little different muscle something a little different from time to time yeah, yeah totally but that I mean that you know I think that to, to love of everything you do in I don't know in in your world you kind of have to do a lot of things because if you do the same thing over and over again it just it you kind of lose track of it yeah for sure so. for sure yeah and you get to stretch your legs a little bit and just play different shit and like yeah mm-hmm. and fucking yeah when i was listening to stuff, i was like just like yeah like the guitar tones are killer like it's just crushing orange amps i think you're using or something or somebody oh. one of the guys does or something yeah i, was all, I like, mean yes <laughs> <laughs> i mean the, the big ampeg refrigerator bass, yeah you know? hell yeah i mean yeah. Ma- i mean matt from from bone honk the singer uh, and guitar player uh, I mean, he builds his own guitars. I mean, yeah. like they're I mean, really into like the the love and art of guitar making yeah. and amplifiers. Um, and I, and I get to play drums behind that, which is really fun. And it's just a wall of sound to um, yeah. get to play with. And it's I don't know, it's yeah. it, it's a whole yeah. Go go see Bonehawk; it'll melt your face. So. Yeah, indeed. No, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I really like it. And I'll have to fucking uh, if they're building guitars and shit, we'll have to get them on too, or somewhere you can bring them because I build guitars too. I, I dabble. I can't say I'm like yeah. You know, it's, but... it's called Nomad Guitars. Oh shit! They got like a whole thing. Yeah, doing, like, yeah, the brand yeah, and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, that... we'll, uh... Well, uh, I'll, I'll, set, I'll get you the Sweet. beats. Well, I was just showing you down there where my workshop's going to be. That's what I do in that workshop is build guitars. Uh. So the guitars you walked by up there, though, I've built all those except for the Les Paul. The, but the ones that are up there are like... And when I say I built them, I mean I spec them and order them and put them together. And right, right. I'm, it's, I'm not, not, it's not like you're like, yeah. like melting down the, the <laughs> copper yeah, 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 the yeah. wires. I'm or... not wrapping the pickle. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not fucking, uh, you know, building the neck itself, you know, or whatever. But, you know... Down there forging fucking mm-hmm. iron on the steel. <laughs> Thing going free maze mm-hmm. well i mean like yeah it's you you do a lot of things though i mean you're kind of a renaissance man yourself i mean thank you yeah, yeah i mean so it's just, i wouldn't be surprised if like you know i don't know you got like a kiln or something like yeah <laughs> dude, it's melt, coming it's coming melt stuff down <laughs> our boy lens who actually was going to be here tonight he's got a forge they just started forging <laughs> that is freaking awesome they're making movie. knives and shit <laughs> See, like that, i mean yeah that's the great thing about the pandemic was that like it let people like do that stuff a little yeah, bit more yeah. you know I mean, like yeah. you had no, you couldn't really go to work. Some people couldn't go to work, and so they got to like work on forging mm. steel. I yeah. feel like there are few fewer things than being like a true fucking badass when it comes to forging metal. And that sort of, like, there are, I mean, very few more it's about manly, the manly activities thing. than that. Yeah, dude. <laughs> big old dip, big old shaw on one side, just fucking pounding, banging pounding away pounding on that metal. Iron, dude. Raw. <laughs> and like I. And I would hope that, like, I mean, you, you, you envision, like, the biggest, burliest dude. But, like, I hope there's, like, a, the, the tiniest person just building the biggest sword. They're crush. the guys that sharpen the thing. Dude. You got to get that guy doing the finish work. You Some know, a little wayfish figure down there just pounding the Oh, man. Top. You'll be surprised. <laughs> so, uh, there's a lot of shit I want to talk to you about, dude. But, yeah. so, um, you know, like we were just talking about, my dad passed away recently. So I'm um, cleaning you know, out just... the old spot, you know, where you guys used to rehearse and everything. Sure. And, you know, I've maintained that spot for, for year, all this time. Mm-hmm. So down there is a big sign that says drums, guitars, amps or something like that. And it's it's nailed to the wall. Inside the picture frame of that is all these old pictures okay okay yes and inside that picture frame has been this picture oh for i couldn't even oh it says on the back 2000 of you in the corner that's been there all those years dude (laughs) so i grabbed it last time i was out there (laughs) soak it in a little bit can we talk about my my earrings? <laughs> yeah, you got earrings. Uh. I have I, I haven't. I don't know who this dog is. Is did you? Is this? No, it, I thought that was your dog. I thought you were doing no, this. I, I don't. It's Tippy. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely was not my family dog, so I definitely know that. No for sure. idea where no. I was taken or anything. Yeah. Um. This must have been from the first tour that. Yeah, um, I think it was. I think did, it came out of that. Um. And well, it could have been. It's probably the Dashbury Lucas days. I yeah, think, I think it, we changed our name from the Haskells to Dashbury Lucas. It's got to be that, from at that, that point yeah. in time. 
That might have been something Rick took or something like that. Or so, I couldn't so, that, so this must be from like 99. It says on the back 2000. Oh. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I, I didn't know either. I just looked and it says on there. Wow. The yeah. August 2000 or something like that. I mean, I got the soul patch, the little goatee. <laughs> I mean, it was a different time. And yeah. I, I was so strange and awkward then. I still am now, but it was, you know. It's just funny to me that it's just been there all these years. It's just been there. I haven't touched it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's just been sitting there. So, yeah, we were fucking laughing about that. I mean, so. it's... <laughs> It, that's years it, Take it's it with so you. long i mean it's i mean it's 20 23 years ago jeepers man somewhere there's still a very sad person looking for that apparently missing dog this checking this, this answer machine did this dog go on yeah. tour with you it was just roadieing for I, a while <laughs> that's great i you know i would love to get to the bottom of the, that that pet but it's yeah <laughs> i thought for sure like oh i thought you were gonna be like, oh <laughs> casey yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no like, we, like i had Toto. i had i had I had a Toto style dog growing up, and his name was Casey, and it's definitely not that dog. So that's hilarious, yeah. man. No clue where that came from. It's just been sitting there. But it, it is, it is me. Yes. Yeah, that's definitely you. It, it's just like there's next to that. There's old pictures of a bunch of shit. There's an old. You remember those? I don't even. They called them mirrors or something, but they were those things you'd get at the carnival that were like those. They were like a glass picture. And you'd throw darts or whatever, and you'd get like the thing. Do you know what I'm talking about? Right, it was a little frame, yeah. and, 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 and it would have like like Looney Tunes on it, or yeah, like a, a movie be, like Space Jam, or all like, kinds of shit. Yeah, it'd yes. be like anything. Yeah, There's yeah, one okay. of those, but it's of the Snoop Dogg, but it doesn't <laughs> look like Snoop Dogg. Like we think it's some other guy, <laughs> and they put a Snoop Dogg on it. So like that's in there with that. They would some is it like the the Fruitport Days Carnival? Yeah, yeah. Dude, and it was yeah. all airbrushed and stuff yeah. like that yeah, yeah i know exactly yeah, yeah. in okay. fairness the fruit board carnival's working on a limited budget they couldn't afford that actual spot they couldn't Snoop get the material. real snoop picture <laughs> there's They're like so yo much tito like get over here you got a fucking kodak i think there's still some boxes of dashboard lucas cds down there too with the fucking misspelling yeah the, forever 10, yep. year, 10 years old yep. forever yep. and i think josh he was just talking about he found the proofs or something. Oh, the, like, that, that we never, yeah, like, we never yeah, looked at. We were yeah. just so excited to have proofs for. Yeah. Like, th so, so out there in internet <laughs> land, if you ever do a CD, and they send you proofs for the artwork, really check it Look over. <laughs> <laughs> because once once you sign off on them, and then they like you know make and manufacture all this stuff, and they send it back to you, and it's supposed to say. Forever. Uh, forever. <laughs> <laughs> and it says forever. <laughs> You're going to have a weird conversation with the manufacturing company about yeah. why you think that they should make it right um, because, mm -hmm. you know, you signed off on a mistake that they made. And um, yeah. Here's yeah. the thing about it. Here's the thing. You ready for this? Yes. This is what he told me. I didn't look at him, but he said, Josh said, that he looked at all the proofs and the only one that's not signed is the one with the misspelling. Sounds questionable. Interesting. So, so I'm trying so, to clear your name a little bit. <laughs> well, and I, I mean, I, I think it was a collective, you know... We, we, Debacle? We, yeah, I mean... <laughs> And, and 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 to to our benefit at that time, we were I think we were booking a tour or two. We had never been like outside of the state except for maybe Cleveland once, and so like we were just trying to get uh, out on the road. And so I I, I think we just there mm -hmm. were some minor details that yeah. we we didn't. I mean it was I mean at this point, dude, it's so innocent and cute. Oh, like, it's, it's hilarious. Like, you know, man. it's the best. Um, yeah. Either way, there are no regrets about how it all went. Uh, no. You know? no. Regrets, dude. No. <laughs> but that's yeah. I, I I do have a box of those rec, uh, CDs somewhere. Yeah, my... I think there. Yeah, there's many boxes and <laughs> many landfills. <Yeah. laughs> that was a good songs on there. I'll have to break it out. I wish I should have fucking uh, queued some of it up on here. We could. I wonder how it holds up. It's I haven't listened to it since then. You know, like it's probably because you guys recorded that at Western or something. Yeah. Was that how that was that that thing you guys were doing? Well, yeah. So we ended it up i it's possible that um josh your brother tracked some stuff uh, at your, your Could, house yeah, i probably, think that yeah. happened too mm -hmm. but the bulk of it was done uh by this guy rick who was like the assistant recording engineer at, at western right and um he needed a project and somehow like 
he he helped teach percussion too, and I convinced him that he needed to record our band. Right. And so he took it on. Yeah. Um, but he didn't have a lot of time, and we were like driving back and forth from Muskegon, um, because I like we were like maybe Josh, your brother, were living in Kalamazoo at the time. I'm not yeah. really sure. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, How yeah. it happened, but yeah. um, I I do remember one night we were recording that record, and uh. I drove a minivan at the time, a silhouette. Uh, yeah, I remember the old, the, yeah, the yeah. vacuum cleaner, yeah, the, the dust, dust buster. buster. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and we we had had an all night recording session, and we went to drive back to Muskegon at like four five a.m. and the the van wouldn't start, <laughs> <laughs> and so we're stuck be- behind Western's music department's loading dock, and like we're already illegally parked, and they're gonna tow, and like we're worried about. You know, oh, tickets and stuff like that. So, like, we I don't know. I was probably 19 at the time. And I called my dad in a panic. I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> As one does. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. So he's like, God damn it, Nate. So he, he, <laughs> so he gets out of bed and drives to Kalamazoo from Muskegon. Oh, like, just oh, pissed right, off. Man. Oh, just yeah. pissed yeah, off. Yeah, that's a rough drive. At yeah. Just morning. bless his heart, man. I, like, <laughs> the, guy, the guy's always been so damn supportive. The whole weight yeah. is going, oh, oh, shit, this goddamn. <laughs> and he shows up. And he's like, you try jumping it? And I'm like, well, yeah. Yeah? Well, let's try it again. And uh-huh. like, dude, we jumped it. It fired right up. And yeah, like, <laughs> I know. When the when the old man gets on it, you yeah. know, when your dad gets on it, it's like, <laughs> it, knows, it knows it's in trouble. <laughs> God damn it, Nate. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, dad. And yeah. yeah. It's just like, I've grown up and you have like... It's- oh, dude, I called my dad to save me from on car shit up until... T- Three weeks ago, <laughs> you know, right. like he's the guy you talk constantly, to. dude. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's I hilarious. had this one experience one time, so we kind of did a sneak job up to like a shared family cabin with the chick I was dating in high school at the time, right? Like yep. real off the book situation. I had the parents' van. The fucking van dies halfway home, out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. It's like two in the morning, same yeah. type of situation. Got to fucking nut up and call the parents. <laughs> they get out there they're like, what's going on? Did you check this? Did you check that? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Ends up being I ran the fucking thing out of gas. Because I'm mean, like, oh, yeah, I yeah, did is, that too. This is an egregious <laughs> omission on my part. Whoops. Best laid plans. Yeah, for real. It's unfortunate. Yeah, we had a couple of fucking band vans through the years, dude. Later on, we had one that was, uh, I don't know if you guys were ever in this one, but Josh had, uh, they were all Josh's, you know, he was the van guy. He he had the Thunder Tank. Did you guys fuck with the Thunder Tank, or was that after you were I, fucking I, with them? I think. It was I, a blue conversion van with the turtle top. Did you remember that I one? don't remember this, okay. no. And then after that, we had one that he bought from some church that was a 15-passenger, like, you know, GMC. Yeah. And uh, that one was called Jean claude Claude damn van <laughs> and that one was more my era that was when josh and i were playing together nope. in, in our couple of bands and like oh fuck man that thing i remember driving it home from some party at three in the morning out in grand haven that we played some show at and it died and it's like three in the morning in the rain like there was that we drove it back from fucking uh like Ludington in the fucking snowstorm and there's no heat and the windows yeah. are open and people are smoking cigs out the window. You I mean, know, that's when you shit. know you're living. You know, like, <laughs> there, there, there's like a van, like van traveling on tour. Yeah, like there's something yeah. that there's a very freeing feeling about that. <laughs> there, there, there truly is. I and mean, that's, yeah. I mean, I, I still like, I love going on tour in vans mm-hmm. across the country. I mean, there's something like you feel like you can, like you have your, you're surrounded by, your friends and your stuff and you can take on the world and, yeah. and you're putzled on the highway at a solid yeah, 70 man. if you're lucky yep. and then at that at the worst time it lets you down and you spend yeah. thousands of dollars <laughs> on your vanager yeah. it's yeah. not it's like literally you got to pay your vanager because <laughs> you know like you had that yeah, great gig, you yeah, saw yeah. all that merch, but no, sorry, your van you had to uh-huh. leave the side of the on the side of the highway in North Carolina, yeah, yeah and yeah. you don't get paid for a year. You again. stall out in front uh-huh. of the local playground with the blacked out oh, van God. windows. That's not a great look. Didn't That's that cool. happen to you guys on that little tour that you guys did with my brother? Didn't the van die at some point? You guys got stranded somewhere. Well, or something? I should have brought him in because he'd know the stores. I don't know, you know. Like. Um, <laughs> we had issue with the brake lines, um, with the the dustbuster van because we took a van. The, the Dustbuster Silhouette minivan, we pulled a trailer behind it, and then there's a car following yeah. with uh, with Rick and uh, 
Oh, you guys had two vehicles. Yeah, we had okay. a flotilla. Got yeah, it. yeah, it was a caravan <laughs> across the country. Caravan it. Um, from from how I remember it. Yeah. Um, but at one point we started leaking a uh, brake fluid, and so oh no, it was power steering fluid. I'm sorry. And so we had a power steering leak, and so we knew every two hours we had to pour put more fluid in it because the uh, steering wheel would lock up, and it wasn't a big enough issue for us to like. Yeah, we just drove it. It was. Yeah. It, it wasn't yeah. like we didn't have to abandon ship or anything like that. So it was gotcha, fine. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's, that's for some reason I remember you guys being broke down somewhere overnight or something. But I don't know. It's you know I wasn't there. All that shit's yeah. blur to me. It's just what I remember. All that here. stuff's on video. It's there's a YouTube yeah. videos of, of like that entire tour. That is like, there? Yeah. So is it like um, actually on YouTube? It's like, on YouTube and also. Um, so Mike Numidor went on this trip um, with us to ten- to document it, but his younger brother Nick Numidor owns a video production company called Little Kevin Films, and so he got it and turned it all into this like whole like four hour video. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, I definitely got to watch that. Yeah, That's I'll send so it to cool. you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on it. I'm, I'm like, I don't know, like. So a good chunk of it is on YouTube, I think, that right. Rick put up there. But yeah. there's a whole, like, there's hours of it. Yeah, yeah. So, like, that that may answer the question. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other story that I, again, I, I wasn't there, that, but I remember hearing, well, there's two. There's two that come to mind, was some fucking, Josh always talked about some giant moth at a fucking rest stop or a fast food place and some redneck going, go on, get it. <laughs> and he still does that to this day. He still sits there going, "Go on, get." <laughs> so this is this is this is funny because I don't remember the 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 moth, but I to this day go, "Go on, get," yeah. all the time. Yeah. And, and and I just assumed it was from like a show, but maybe it's from this he, moth adventure. From, from what I understand is that you guys or they or whatever were going into it was like the. Uh, like a foyer of a fast food place or something, you know, like the double doors. <laughs> and there was some fucking one tooth employee there. And he it was one of those moths that was like the size of a dinner plate. <laughs> and it's, it's hanging there on the wall. And this guy's like swiping at it with the broom. And he's going, go on, get, go on, get. <laughs> and it's still a thing, dude. It's funny that you say it. I, I, like, yeah, this this, this it. must be the, oh, yeah. this is the origin story. That's because, it, dude. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Cause yeah. I literally, Literally, I, like, I say it, I'm not going to say daily, but weekly. Yeah, like, yeah for sure. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully I'm not getting it wrong, but that's what I remember the story being. And then there was some shit, like some dude got shot or is, here's something. Yeah. Then there's like pictures of like all the like carnage. Dudes. Yeah, yeah. So this is our first tour. We did like, this is like all the dangers of touring. Like we were, okay. Yeah. It was like, we were like 1920. And it's like pre-internet. Yes. You know, like yes. <laughs> we booked the entire tour through, uh, B Y O F L book your own fucking life dot org. Yep. Which I think is still kind of a thing on yeah, the internet. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they used to print magazines yep. and you would list your name and the band you played with or the venue you worked at, and you would just go through this Rolodex and just hit up strangers and ask them to book your band. Um for and you had varying results. You know, some yeah. some were great and some were bad. Um but we ended up playing down in Nashville with uh, our, our good buddy Joseph uh, set it up. Joseph is, uh, these days, the guy uh, behind the Proto Men. Which, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <clears throat> I met that dude because he, he came up one time and hung out for a while later. Yep, yeah, yep. yeah, I know that dude. Yep, and so so he's continued to play music, and they just plotted a whole like European tour that they're going on. So, oh, nice, yeah. So yeah, he's hustling. But anyways, at the time, he was in this band called Silvero, and they were this cool, like, indie, like, emo-esque, like, space rock shoegaze band. Yeah. And um, so they got us the show at this venue, and we had never been to Nashville before and we didn't know where we were. Um, and apparently it was in a terrible neighborhood. And so, but we don't, we don't care. I and mean, it doesn't matter. We're playing a show in Nashville. So fuck. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden after sound check, we're in the club and all of a sudden all hell breaks loose and people are like screaming, get in the club, get in the club. And like pop, pop, pop. We're like get down. And like, so the, apparently there's a shooting, like there's a, a drive like 
it was a drive-by shooting where a car came by and this guy was crossing the street in front of the club and they just mowed him down and they hit him in the legs. Yeah, he okay. blew his right. knee out or something, right? Yeah. yeah. And so they so they ended up rushing the guy to the the ER and the guy the, the gunman either ran away or drove off. And so business and life went back to usual. Um, so the show started back up, but what th- no one even cared to think about was the fact that the guy's bloody knee was still in the middle of the street yeah. all night long. And so like you walk outside and this guy's guts are like hanging out there <laughs> and there's like birds picking at it and stuff. Oh, oh, it was, it was fucking Dude, terrifying. Yeah, man, yeah. like, and there's photos of it. I, <laughs> yeah, that's what I remember yeah, seeing the, the, the photos. Yeah. Of, like, it was just, just like, like, what in bone the Bone and blood and marrow and shit. It, like, yeah. yeah. Like, and that was like one of the first nights of that tour. So that really <laughs> kind of like made us like go like, what the fuck You're are like, we this doing? This is like the tone for the rest of the, <laughs> yeah. uh, the, rest of the shows. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, welcome to being on tour. This is rock and roll, baby. The tour. Nashville's yeah, got man. their priorities in order. The show must go fucking on. Dude. I mean, dude, all dude, the things happened. Up. Our bass player Judd got poison ivy on that tour. And, oh yeah, and so yeah. his covered had to tell. Him, oh, yeah, like, I forgot about that. All over. Yep. I got hit in the eye with a bungee cord. I was gonna bring I, that up too because yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I, I almost lost my eye. Like I was yeah. unpacking a trailer, and we had uh, uh, we built a shelf in the in the top of the five by eight trailer, and to close off the shelf we had these fucking bungee cords you know what could go wrong and like we're in i don't know uh, these coast somewhere and i'm trying to get merchandise off the top of the trailer and the bungee cord comes undone and hits me right yep. smack yep. beneath the eye uh, yep. and it just it dropped me and i i was seeing stars for three days um, I, I thought for sure that I it hit. Yeah, I thought I was gonna lose my eye. For and real, you're fucking cornea, whatever, disconnected dude, or some shit. Well, I mean, so it just it split open the bottom of my eye, and everyone's like, "Holy shit!" But it didn't. It could have been a lot worse. Had it hit my eyeball, I yeah. wouldn't. You it, got you got lucky. I, you know? I, I yeah. really did. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember seeing those pictures. Dude. There's tons of pictures of you with this huge gash. black eye and yeah. gash, like the whole thing underneath your eye. But you know, like I, I played that show two hours later. I'm like, I show goes on, uh-huh. you know, and <laughs> and I think everyone's just happy that I, you know, didn't have to go to the doctors or anything. <laughs> Indeed, I'm, there ain't no medical insurance, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So the other thing, and this was a, a request from Josh about I don't know what this tour or something was. He said. I told him you were coming on. He said, ask him about the time he fell off his drum throne and ripped the bottom of his pants out at the smallest <laughs> stage ever or something like that. So that's that's what he told me to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this like I would love hear him here to kind of set this up for I know, I know. We'll have to get all you guys together. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I, I think it might have been a show in Cleveland. I, I don't really know where it was, but uh, it was a it was a different time. It was the '90s. Uh, you know, it was maybe 2000, but baggy pants were still a thing mm-hmm. um i'm not saying they were jinko jeans <laughs> <laughs> but i'm not saying they weren't jinko jeans all right so let's just let let me just preface that it was the 90s okay um and so most likely i i did i, I took a tumble back and it popped a like it it ripped my whole ass out of my pants <laughs> And so, like, I mean, we 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 duct taped them, and it was it was a whole thing. I mean, it was just humiliating, humiliating, awesome. I mean, it was all, it was, yeah, it was, it was great times. Yeah, so. questionable quality on the Jinko jeans back uh, in the day. They, but I mean, Levi's, they were not. For sure. I mean, you love the deft tones, and you want baggy oh, jeans. Yeah. I mean, I just like I don't. I mean, I, 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 I yeah. I mean, I, I feel like. I'm not, I, you know, I'm not embarrassed. You know, it's fine. You yeah. Know, it's, oh I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. I can just picture it. I just you fucking you falling off. You jump through. Oh fucking. my goodness. So, so the other thing that I want to say about the time, um, so right before that tour in, in my life, I had gotten an MIP, a minor in possession of alcohol. Yeah. And so, uh, I couldn't tell my parents because I was going on this tour. I was going on tour with my band. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, I need to sort this out when I get home. So I just, I, the day after I got done with this tour, um, I'm like, yeah, 19, 20, whatever. 
and I've got cargo shorts on, sandals, and a Hawaiian t-shirt. And I go down to the courthouse with my minor possession ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so I go to the woman at the desk, or the person, and I'm just like, hi, I got this. Uh-huh. And they're like, wait outside courtroom three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, looking you up and down with a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, courtroom? <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and so... Huh? I waited outside the courtroom, but I didn't know you had to go in it. And so they, 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 call, they called the case that I didn't know I had a case about. And so the judges called my name. And so, like, the bailiff has to come out and get me. So I, so I make this grand entrance, <laughs> <laughs> rolling down, you know, doing the strut Looking down. like a young Jimmy Buffett in yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, like, with this goatee, like, this butt-cut hair, probably, like, a stupid, like, like half necklace. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. looking like a yeah. f- clown. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, so all my friends, so, yeah. He's like, how come you weren't there soon? I don't know. So anyways, yeah, I got. I was the only one that got community service for that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, they were pissed at you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Judd, yeah. Judd, he he got off scot free. Oh, for real? Yeah, he ran from the cops. What he just fuck? ran away. Yeah, fucker. Yeah, uh, came he in and a JC Penny suit. So, I, so, it was, it was so I guess point being, like, it was like I was so dumb and naive about everything in my life that like I had no idea that you should just like, go to the court. And you're gonna see a judge. You should probably like dress up and like yeah. not wear sandals and a Hawaiian t-shirt. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, Birkenstocks and I mean, the Tommy Bahama. I, mean, I was a kid. I had I didn't yeah. know any better. You know? Did they print you or any of that kind of stuff? Or they didn't print me that time. Yeah. No, yeah. That, that was a different time. But he and I got <laughs> popped together on an MIP, and uh, we we were also there the same day for court <laughs> together <laughs> and ah. stuff. Like we got popped the same day, going to the same party in Kalamazoo. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, then I don't know, whatever it is, a month later, you fucking got to go in and, you know, you surrender yourself or whatever. And you go, <laughs> you go in and uh, what I specifically remember was the judge talking to you because he was this fucking like swinging dick, fucking big head of hair like motherfucker. And I remember him going, Mr. Chave, <laughs> <laughs> calling you that. And I was just going, <laughs> send this shit my pants, yeah. <laughs> Just laughing my ass off, and uh, but then I I went and uh, I pleaded because they they make you plea in the whole thing, and he goes, "How do you plea?" And I go, "Guilty." And he goes, "I'm gonna recommend you plead not guilty." And I was like, "Okay, really? You know, you're the judge, man. You let yeah. me know." And because uh, I was I was a month away from being 21, and so. They sat me there for a while, and then I go into the back room, and I I literally had to make a plea deal with this fucking really yeah with this fucking Condoleezza Rice looking fucking <laughs> bitch who was the uh, whatever the state what do you call it? the state prosecutor prosecutor yeah. or whatever county yeah or whatever yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah and uh, and so they made me a plea deal where if I if I pled guilty i wouldn't get like it would go on my record but i wouldn't really have any consequences and they were basically like like uh they were telling me like do you plan on being a teacher no do you plan on being like a whatever because it's like if it's going to be on your record like this is going to be on your record I, I so did, like, but you're not a fucking sex offender at that point yeah, you, you're drinking yeah, at a right. party yeah, you know yeah. like yeah so they were kind of like if you do this it will be on your record but you won't have any consequences so as long as so like i pled I ended up pleading guilty on a plea deal, but the whole thing I'm just sitting there going, like I'm just, it's the same thing. You're 20 years old, and I'm just going. Uh, 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 <laughs> Which you know? how absurd like, is it to get an MIP in your 20s? Same thing with me, and like I was farther away from being 21, but nonetheless, it's like, yeah. dude, come on, I'm a handful of months away. We're in yeah. college at the mm-hmm. time, you know. It's like, come the fuck on, dude. Yeah, it was dumb. We weren't even drunk. We were backpacking we were beers to a party. To a party. Uh-huh. Had not yet drunk a beer. <laughs> Kalamazoo at that time had they had gotten a bunch of money and they hired like 200 more cops like that year it was like that year it was like a thing so it was just like there was fucking cops everywhere it's like anything else it's a way <laughs> for the county to make fucking money you know? 100% like, yeah, kids up yeah. On yeah. $150 fucking tickets you know 
man, let me let let the let the kid. I mean, I just I know it's it's crazy, but I I I know honestly, I got off pretty scot free though over the whole thing. But like, it was just it was kind of a hilarious experience, you know. Yep. So it's a basically a like an unfortunate traffic ticket at the end. Yeah, of the day. yeah I on yeah. the other hand bitched out and I was like, I do not want this on my permanent record, so I went full like chain gang highway cleat up stuff <laughs> not really but i did do the community service and did that whole fucking thing but what a joke man 20 sub years old hadn't even had a beer yet because mm-hmm. really you lived in kalamazoo for a while didn't you i did yeah um so after i graduated from high school i went to western uh and studied music and i was there from like 99 to 2000 and I, yeah till 2005 right um my, my, my college plan kind of took a little bit longer than four years because <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what I wanted to do and uh, I was studying music and I was just really just want to play in bands. Yeah. I want to rock. Yeah. And then at a certain point, like I took a semester off to practice for my senior recital um, and I just joined Mustard Plug instead. Indeed. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nice. which is the, which is the move. <laughs> I, I mean, it, I mean, it definitely yeah. like it's it definitely, I mean, I'm still doing that job. So, uh. um, and, and so, like, I still, like, I still have ties there because Bonehawk's based out of Kalamazoo. And so, like, right. I, I mean, I, my, my next two shows I'm playing are in Kalamazoo. Nice. So, yeah. like, I mean, like, it's that's to me is, like, my other home besides Grand Rapids and Muskegon. Yeah, so. exactly. That is still Same my current me, home, yeah. and I definitely want to yeah. come catch those shows, man. It's okay. Down yeah. in Portage. Oh, yeah. Oh, He's still doing that whole yeah. thing up, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're doing Bells. Mushroom's doing Bells. Okay. With the Mushmen um, in, like, two weeks. And then... Um, the day before Easter, Bonehawk's playing Papa Heat, Papa Pete's, yeah. Papa Heat's, yeah, with this awesome band from Austin called Destroyer of Light. Okay, and they're this stoner doom band that I don't know, it's fucking killer. And the singer of that band um, is from Matawan originally. Oh, um, nice. And, so they're, and they're on this nationwide tour, and they always want to play their hometown, and so we're gonna Sweet. play with them. Got to throw it down, man. Let's come down and make the uh, yeah. Make I'll the come show. down. Yeah, I'm actually doing Papa Pete's. Uh, I got a couple gigs coming up with finally getting back in the gig, and I'm doing Papa Pete's and end of April or something. Okay. I've never, I've never actually been there. Never been there. I lived in Kalamazoo for six years. Uh, I've never been there. Um, yeah, the pizza's pretty good there. That's why. Yeah, that's yeah. what everybody says. <laughs> Everybody's like, yeah, the, <laughs> uh, the pizza's good. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, there there is a void in live music venues in Kalamazoo besides yeah. Bell's currently. Yeah, and so Papa Pete's picks some of that up. Uh, Louis does some help too. Right. Um, and, and then the, Bell's is very like they're pretty. Like there's not a lot of metal happening at Bell's. No. You know what I mean? Like so, like it's pretty like. I mean, like they, they've they've been doing pretty good the past few years about bringing in like all sorts of different variety of things and bands. Right. But the, the Bell's is just so famous that. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to play there, and so they they fill up like. I mean, the stage is cool, and like they you have know, a million dollar sound system. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it, it's it's great, but uh, the, Kalamazoo really miss needs, and it, it's the, the whole of Kalamazoo is is Club Soda. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, I was gonna like, say, remember Club Soda? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like mm-hmm. every college town had this like weird like small to mid tier venue that yep. held, you know two to 350 people yeah. easily maybe four or five depending on who was playing but it's like the old intersection in grand rapids yeah exactly. where like i mean there was a every college town had these clubs and all these bands would there are circuits for them and yep. it's a different thing now yeah well, how silly dude. is it to not have that right like I you've know. got a base you've got kids that are looking to go out and get hammered and have yeah. shit to do like why do you not have a great music seed out there it's inexplicable to me there was some other place that was like right across from like uh shakespeare's that was like uh oh, craft brow there was okay craft it was brow craft brow but yep. next to craft brow was some other little indie venue so the, you, you took the, the space the, the co- space yes the, the coffee, coffee house yes like, i saw fucking uh had a great bands i saw fucking uh I, are you familiar with the hip hop band it's like dialect or whatever? Yeah, yeah i saw them and they fucking came yeah, with you all yeah. the time uh the hu- they're like a Jesus Christ I'm space and ISIS. Yes, you I s- did. I yeah. saw them and ISIS together because they were both on Ipecac Records or whatever, yeah. Mike Patton's record company yeah. or whatever. Yep. And I went. It was when I just moved down there. I went by myself 
because I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to catch these fucking bands. I'd never heard of either of them. Of course, ISIS ended up <laughs> opening for Tool and everything. My favorite band, you know, like, yep. so I ended up seeing ISIS like four times opening for Tool and shit, yep. you know, like later on. But it was like, I saw these guys like, you know, it was like me and 12 other people like you just standing there at that fucking thing, you know, oh, and wild, uh, and the fucking hip hop guys, uh, that dude just died too, I saw. The okay. guy from, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but I think it's dialect. Like, it's supposed to be, like, dialect, that's, but it's, like, a play on, it's spelled weird or something. That's how I would say it, but I guess, yeah. I, I, I don't know. But you know what I'm talking about, because yeah, it's not, yeah. you know, they're not super huge, just a little obscure, so. Yeah, no, but, but, yeah. That, but that's, like, like like they, they cross that weird, like, hip-hop, yeah. like, indie rock, like, sp- mm-hmm. like they get, like, it's like po it's poetry it's dark it's like almost kind of industrial yeah beats. ethereal in, yeah, in a way yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 and i sat there like, like, talking like if, if, if the roots were trippy yeah yeah they're for real yeah. Nice. yeah and i sat there fucking after the show talking to the other mc from that band who was like he's like an asian dude and he was in and out of that band but i sat there talking to that guy for like three hours after that show and they didn't serve alcohol there no it's like, coffee house yeah, and, it was, and an art uh, gallery yeah exactly so that yeah there was like there was dope shit like that when i was down there but that, like when i moved down there club soda closed like that year mm-hmm. you know like so like i only saw like two shows there and, and it just kind of there was just nothing you know so and and, and even even the past like decade that club side was open i mean it was a, a shell of its former self it just i mean they, they just tore down the orbit room and i was gonna say r.i.p orbit room I, just, I, I mean I it's just like oh, i mean the live music is different now and so i i think that in the 90s and early 2000s there was uh, an outlet that people went to go see live music and i think that it's just different now with technology and uh, genres are different and yeah. so like it's really hard to find mm, business owners that want to do venues that probably won't ever make any money. Exactly. That's, that's, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, for I mean, real. I mean yeah. is, is, is there a lot of money in uh, creative, interesting, fine art? Because that, that's, that's what I think music is, yeah. you know? And it's like, well, yeah, no, but um, you could have like a dance night and bring in thousands of people. Yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, you kind of have to, that's like, kind of what the intersection is done, you know, like, you know, they, 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 I mean, and like, I love the people, at the intersection and they're trying to keep their doors open and they need, it's a big, they have what the big room, the small room. Now they got the, the other rooms. clubs. Yeah. Which is a good move on their part. Cause they were kind of getting scalable. killed by the fucking, by pyramid scheme. Right. And that, you know, mm-hmm. all these smaller show, the smaller quote unquote of, of that, like you weren't quite big enough to fill the main room at the, the intersection, you know. So like those bands started going to the pyramid scheme, and now like the intersection wasn't really getting anything, you know. Like I'm sure you saw it all, like the same as everybody. Yeah. And uh, so that was a huge move. I love that fucking club at the bottom of the intersection. The elevation, elevation yeah, whatever. dude. Great spot. It's perfect man. size. Mm-hmm. Love it. it. Is perfect. I'm size. like, fuck. Why was this not here when I was fucking playing all the time? You know, this is the perfect <laughs> room for us. You know, like. But it's but it's it's filling those rooms and so I they th- country's big you know it's at least in West Michigan yeah. you know and and EDM dubstep stuff mm-hmm. is huge and and for a business model electronic music like that you can roll into a town with like you know your manager and like your roadie and you have three people on your crew and you're selling out the big room the intersection yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like it's it's a different. Uh, the intersection does do good with bringing in country acts and stuff. They got that like B ninety three night or whatever. And I mean, stuff. I, no, I mean it's. I mean, they are doing everything to keep their doors. Or, I mean, they, they're they're one of the biggest concert ve- like yeah. venues in the nation. You yeah. know, so I mean, they, they're doing it right. But I just like we all wish that there's more independent music happening yeah. in, in West Michigan because yeah. th- there's a lot more of that then. But yeah. I but if no one's going to show up and people can't afford to be open, yeah. it's like it's it's a fucking double edged sword. Yeah, it really is. It's, and after it's and after crazy. and after COVID, it's like I mean, live shows are still. I mean, I think they're back, but uh, so our club shows are. St- People think twice about just going out now. Yeah, for real. Because because yeah. like, there's just like more stuff to worry about, and so if there's more responsibility and more stuff to worry about, I'm just gonna sit home and watch YouTube. Right, you know, I right, mean, right. like a lot. I mean, and and that's not me, but I think that's a lot of people, mm-hmm. and especially as we get older. I mean, hell, I'm 43 now. Yeah, and yeah. And it's like uh, some people have a lot of people have responsibilities early and families and whatnot, yeah, and so it's yeah. like 
Do they want to be at a show and the band goes on at 11 o'clock? Exactly, dude. I well, think and everything's fuck, so convenient. Yeah. And there are so many things vying for attention, right? You yeah. got fucking HBO and it. like, oh, a brand new movie's coming out. Like, which why you can watch you on go your out, ass you know? from home instead of going to the theater and mm-hmm. all that fucking youtube and spotify and listen to tunes and like god forbid mm-hmm. i got to take a shower and brush my teeth and <laughs> see other human beings well you don't gotta take a shower to go to, go to the, the orbit show. room you know Fair <laughs> point. Fair point. Yeah. <laughs> we saw a lot of great shows at the oh, orbit room goodness, man, man. <laughs> did you i mean you played the orbit room it would... i i did i did a few times um with with the plug or what so i played with with the plug i did play that room with this man kiss me quick. Yeah, I was going to talk to you about that too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, uh, not to get sidetracked, but I found that CD. Uh, it was it was a burned copy that you guys gave. Must have been to Josh before it was out. So it was like okay. it was like I don't know if you had just tracked it. Yeah, it's or, a CDR. Sure. Yeah, it was a CDR. The kiss me quick fucking written on. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, somebody put it on Spotify a couple years ago. So yeah, it, it's 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 up forever um which i think whoever did that because it's just you know it's kind yeah. of cool to like be able to like mm-hmm. track you know you know things like you've played on that are that, that will exist at least forever yeah, in some degree exactly yep. i think it, i think it has like 12 monthly listeners or something like that oh, you yeah. know which yeah. is great you know <laughs> for, yeah. <laughs> um but we yeah so we we played eris's rock search ah uh, yeah Re- rest in peace eris yeah, r.i.p I, eris man, i mean that's sure. dude i mean so Eris is now gone in GR. Mm-hmm. Bill Vitz is now gone in GR, mm-hmm. which is like, dude, Bill was like the drummer of the concussions, the principal percussionist of the Grand Rapids Symphony for years and years. Like one of the best drummers and percussionists of West Michigan for freaking ever. An inspiration to so many of us dudes. He died and now the orbit room's done. It's like, it's it's a really, it's a passing of the guard right now. Yeah. In, I mean, we're just getting to the age where that happens, and it's yeah. so weird to see. I know, and I, I don't know how to come to terms with it. Like, yeah, like my like, so my old man is uh, seventy five, um, or about to be, and so he's getting ready to retire, and he's at a, he's at a furniture store for seventy years. Yeah, and so all of our family stuff is there, mm-hmm. and so finally he's selling his store. So that the past couple of weekends, my brother and I have been cleaning out that store and going through all the family stuff mm-hmm. you know and it's just it's so crazy to go through this stuff from like For real. 30 40 <laughs> years ago it's yep. just like yep. and it seemed like yesterday in so many ways yeah so it's it's a total mind fuck it really is, i don't man. like it uh, me either that's, that's and you can't stop too. it yeah. but that's here we I are found this picture and yeah, some of man. this shit that's around here was like shit we've i found up in my attic i'm like oh that's 70s enough to put in the fucking lounge you know like but I mean, yeah there's so much stuff so know? many it's, memories built in uh-huh. oh my this goodness comes man flooding back when you sent that picture and like obviously the orbit room has been out of commission for a hot minute but yeah to, like, a couple years see it i know and it's all torn down i haven't actually looked at it in a minute and it's been like graffitied and shit on the yeah. outside and i'm like oh, it shit, looked rough man. those photos made it look rough it was rough i was talking about it fucking the last couple times we were there like the hvac system wasn't working <laughs> i don't know if you saw me talking about that but like we were there we saw fucking like megadeth and uh oh. fucking like it's like the hvac they were like running these huge hoses out those back doors like giant oh. fucking corrugated oh. pipe and like it was we were up in the balcony and like people's uh breath was like raining back down yeah because there's so you ever experienced that it's like flying southwest when they turn the air on (laughs) yeah i mean i've got incurable mesothelioma from the orbit memories were tremendous you know so you said my shoes are still (laughs) fucking sticky dude my shoes are still sticky from that place dude yeah but i played there i was lucky enough to play the the Orbit Room stage is fucking choice. The fucking sound is killer. Yeah. Probably the best sound of any place that I played. And I didn't play a million places mm-hmm. I played, you know, but, um, and man, it always sounded fucking great in there. And like, uh, they were reasonably cool. Fucking the guy I was working with was Ted and he was a fucking, uh, huge yeah. James Bond fan. And like, he and I would always talk about James Bond and shit. And like, he, he was a good dude. Ted, you know, Ted so. owns a tip top deluxe in GR. Oh, that's, does that's his venue. Cool. Yeah, right on. So he brings a lot of different bands. So. Good for him, man. Yeah, he was, awesome he was, a, he was a cool guy. Yep. You know, he, you know, I, I had to fucking break his balls to pay me a couple times. Sure. But, <laughs> as it goes. But. One of my favorite moments of that place, um, I was 17 and the Deftones were playing on the Around the Fur tour. Yeah. yeah and nice. and so it was, it was a high school night. And so me and a friend drove up from Muskegon to go to the show. 
And it was one of the first few shows that I was, I mean, I'm like stoked to go to and fucking Dove Dogs. Hell yeah. And we're standing like three fourths of the way back and there's this big giant biker guys behind me. And all of a sudden I hear this, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and this, this big giant, this big giant dude pukes all over my back, oh, Jesus. Oh, all over oh. my back, and I'm just like, what do I do? What do I do? So what I do is I jump in the pit and just rub it over everybody else and cover them in this guy's freaking vomit. It was so. still there all these years later. That's what I'm saying. You know, like, they, they never mocked that fucking place. Oh my god! I think the last show there I saw was either Motorhead. Um, yeah. Or the, the, the mustard plug opened up for Dropkick Murphys there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, Last show I saw there was definitely, I think, that Megadeth show. But uh, one of the best shows I was trying to think of was the, my favorite show I ever saw there. And it, one was Deftones, but it wasn't that Deftones. It was a little later. And uh, it was where I got introduced to Thrice. Oh, okay. Which, so Thrice yeah. was a thing. I'd heard the name, but I hadn't, I wasn't. I wasn't up on it. I didn't have the record. It was like the artist in the ambulance. So it was they're like, plugs label for breaking. years. Yeah. yeah, hopeless. Yeah. So they fucking uh, they were opening for Deftones, mm -hmm. and they fucking. I was just like, these guys are fucking awesome. Like it was, it was in that era. Like they, ch you know, they changed quite a bit and stuff. But it, it, they fucking blew my fucking mind. And then, uh, you know, and Deftones fucking killed that night too. I saw Deftones there probably three times. I've seen them. They, they came through like regularly. Yeah, yeah. I saw Deftones a shitload of times, you know. So, but were you with us uh, with the big group at Warp Tour in like '98 where Deftones played and it was all the swing bands and shit? Were you at mm, that? So the the one, the one Detroit Warp Tour I remember seeing, um, I saw Eminem. Okay. okay. Yeah. And and we drank a lot of Yoohoo. I don't know really. I don't, yeah. I, there was the Yoohoo uh, thing. I there, saw but... Rancid maybe. Maybe Green Day was uh -huh. was was they. No. There? Well, if it's the same one, this was the one I was at was ninety eight. Okay. Rancid played. Yeah. Uh, it was right in this fucking the whole swing explosion. Had yes. Happened, okay? Yes. Yes. So there was uh, Deftones played, but it was also like, there the was Cherry Pop and Daddies. It was like... Cherry Pop and Daddies. It was Save Ferris. Okay. Um. The Descendants played. Oh. Yeah. And we were front row. Because if you remember, there was like the two stages. And it would be like one band be setting up. And the and other band. Yeah. And you'd go back and forth. Yeah. Well, we went over and got like front row for The Descendants. And we were against the gate and just got crushed. And it, <laughs> I was 14 or something. Sure, I yeah. weighed nothing. And I remember just getting fucking crushed in that shit. But yeah. Rancid played. Um Green Day wasn't wasn't there, no, so it might have been a I, I, I don't think one. it was Green Day, but yeah. I, I remember seeing Rancid. I mean, it was. Yep. I mean, it was a long time ago, and it was yeah, a really hot sure. day. Yeah, it was crazy. But yeah, there was this crazy shit about you who there was so much you. Everybody was throwing fucking stealing and throwing water bottles because it was one of those things where they were price gouging on the water, yep. and the guys were like trying to take water to the venues, and everybody was just jacking it, just fucking like taking the water, and these guys just being like "fuck you," and. uh the other thing, and I still have it, is the movie Basketball had just come out, and they were promoting it on the Warp Tour by having, they were film. beach balls, but they were basketballs, <laughs> and there was hundreds of them, and I still have it. That's another thing that's still in my it? dad's basement. It's Why been, is that not in the I, it's pod gonna, It's going to be. Right it's now, coming. Dude. It's coming. And I've had to inflate it three or four times through the years, because it's just gradually <laughs> fucking <laughs> gone now, but that's what I remember about that, is, uh, and you know, Deftones fucking killed it at that show. Was, mm -hmm. That was definitely for me. Rance to Deftones mm -hmm. and Cherry Pop and Daddies and, uh, is an odd trifecta. Uh, and what was that it was Austin. Kid Rock that fucking played. So I don't know if you're mistaken <sighs> Kid Rock and Eminem or if it was a different show. But so the one because the, uh, it was Kid Rock and we it was before. Hear, hear me out. Hear me. Yep. Were there a bunch of mushrooms on stage? Maybe. I mean, he had what I remember was there was the fucking he had his little person Joe C. Yeah, sidekick. man. And we thought Joe C was Kid Rock <laughs> because he's, you know, because the yeah. kid, you know, the he's, kid he's thing. The kid, and yeah, and he looks like a little kid. We're toward the back, you know, and whatever. And we're yeah. just like, is that Kid Rock? <laughs> yeah, how would you know? Exactly. Who, who would you know? How, how would you? Oh, that's funny. He was doing ball with the ball and all that, you and know, the, all that shit. Oh, little kid. Oh, poor. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. 
it was at Phoenix Amphitheater. Like that's and that, that's what I know. I'm right. and, and I, I think it may have been that year. I, I, I yeah, guess. It, yep. for sure. Yeah, who knows, man? I saw a bunch of fucking bands that year that I can't remember. Or whatever. That that's just what I do remember. Mm-hmm. It's a long time ago, dude, and I was really young. You know, yep. so just getting dragged along by my brother. I mean, know? that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm grateful I got to see all that shit. I mean, like you, you know, seeing the fucking Descendants and fucking that year. You know, it was a long time ago. So. <sighs> That was back when I don't know the whole story. You probably know it more because there was them and all, but it was the same band and the singers were different or something. And yeah. the, the guy disappeared for a minute or something. And so, like, yeah, at a certain point, the descendants didn't want to be uh, a band. Uh, Milo wanted to go have a career in science and became a scientist uh. um, and got a doctorate and wanted to do his own thing. And so they would get together sporadically for um, reunions and, and festivals. But um, the band kind of moved on and and formed all and and all had different singers throughout all's legacy. Okay. as a band, and so gotcha. there's, there's uh, like three different singers. Yeah, I'm not a historian on all that stuff um, at all. But um, but I mean, yes, the, the the guys kept on playing, and you know, yeah. I mean, Bill kept on drumming, and like you know, mm-hmm. like the show the show went on, man. Yeah, 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 it was badass. Um, all right, there's two more things I got to talk about before we take a quick break here because I need another drink and I have to pee. Um, one is I want to go back to the kiss me quick thing because was that what you guys did with the guy from Hum? Yeah. Because you're wearing the Hum t-shirt yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, that, that's what I remember. Is we did that, record uh, a record with Matt. Yeah, from yes, Hum. Yes, yep. yeah, yeah. How was that? Awesome. I mean, it was, um, it was crazy because... At the time, we were trying to figure out where we wanted to record this, these songs, and Hum was had been one of my favorite bands of for, yeah. ever. Still, Same, still, still is. Still Same, is. Yeah. I mean, I have we're, a freaking home. Them. Yeah, all, I mean, yeah. downward is heavenwards. One oh of my, my favorite God. fucking albums. Yeah. And so, I was sitting in like college class my freshman year, and I'm like, you know, I know that Matt records bands. Yeah. I wonder if he's got a website. Right. So I found his website and I just sent him an email. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, like we're this indie band from Kalamazoo. Here's what we sound like. We want to record a demo with you. We like love, like I just a fan. Like I don't do is it something you'd be interested in. And like he got back to us a few years, a few weeks later, and he's like, yeah, like, wh- like how many songs? Like, and he just said, come on down, and that's how that worked. And it was like, it was the weirdest thing to think that you could write someone that you loved and respected and, yeah. that, and that they would even like send you a message back. Right, right, right. And then the whole fact that you'd actually get down there and actually hang out with them, it was a total mind fuck, yeah. man. And how long are you there? What, like a week, two weeks or well, something? You down there? It was, a, it was a few different times. Oh, okay. So we went down and did like a, a, maybe three songs, um, four songs, a demo with him that we uh, recorded and mixed with him. And then we used that demo to get gigs and we ended up getting a weird record deal and so people gave us money to record again with him and so we went and spent three different sessions tracking with him after that over the course of a few months and so we ended up tracking like 14 songs with him and that ended up becoming what that kiss me quick record was um but it was a fucked up story where like you know the, the label that we were on like didn't have any more money to give us to refinish the record and we didn't have any fucking money so we didn't know what to do and it was all and and recording with matt at least at that time Mm -hmm. he might do digital now but it was all on two inch tape yeah so i still have two inch tape for days i have like five reels of two inch tape right that like i mean most bands don't record analog anymore it's yeah it's cost effective it's not cost effective it's you can't fuck up i mean like there's there's so many different issues with that but um because we didn't have enough money to go through and actually mix those two inch tapes down, I had them dumped down um, to Pro Tools in Chicago. Oh, okay. And so Matt hooked me up with this guy, Keith Cliversy, who recorded a bunch of Flaming Lips and Centaur records. And oh, stuff okay. Like that. Yeah. And we went to his crazy studio um, in Chicago and he dumped it down to Pro Tools. And then we ended up mixing it at Temper Mill in Detroit with Dave Feeney um, just to get it out. But it was a, it was a fucking clusterfuck. Yeah. Like, yeah. So anyways, it, it, it 
almost didn't come out, but we got to work with Matt and like it was the I mean, that thing. alone, dude. I don't even care if the record comes out. I'm just well, gonna hang out with that guy. <laughs> but then, but then, but then at one point, all of the stars lined because we were down there recording with him and it just so happened that Year of the Rabbit was playing in Champagne oh, uh, yeah. the night that we were there. Nice. So I got to go hang out with Matt Talbot Shit. to see Year of the Rabbit. And like it was like the world had just collided. Yeah. And it was like, oh my God, we got Ken Andrews. Did we you got get the to drum- meet Ken Andrews? Yeah. Or? I'm just like, Whoa. I'm just like, oh my God. Oh, like, yeah. Dude. Got the failure poster in already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you sent that email, like, were you surprised when you heard back? Were you expecting to? And when you did, I, like, how badass was it? What was the thought going through your head? Were you like, holy shit, this I, guy I can't, fucking idol. I cannot Hit fucking believe it. You know, I just, it just, it blew my mind. It, it, it was and it, so when we were the, when we were down there. It was right when Hum was getting back together to do a reunion show at Crazy Fest. So we ended up driving down like a couple weeks later from Michigan to Birmingham, Alabama, to see them reunite with like Andrew WK and Hate Breed and like a bunch of these other bands at this festival. Um, Finch and Thrice were there too. Yeah, I think. right, right. Um, and it was just the weirdest thing to like, record with them and then being down there and like. And like, like we're at camping next to them, and he's like, "Oh yeah, this is my kid." And like, you know, it's just—I mean, it's just—it's yeah. weird to like, l- like love like a band so much, and then uh-huh. like get to know them as people a little bit too. Yeah, yeah. And and it's it's because it changes the way you see people. Yeah. But it also makes it so much more. In most most cases, it makes it so much more special and meaningful. Yeah. Um, I mean, it does suck to meet your idols and like they turn to be dicks. Yeah. Like, and that yeah. and then what? that is like that's crushing. Yeah. But like. Um, Which Matt Talbot's not a dick. <laughs> no, but like he's 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 a dick in great ways. Like he's yeah, a, he, yeah. he's a cynical. Like he'll make yeah, you like yeah. laugh and make you think. But like he's not like an actual dick. That's not, not at all. Not at all. He's he's a very kind, kind, amazing musician and engineer. And like yeah, every- it's got to be so odd to like see it be humanized like that right like these people you're looking at from afar and listening to and just fucking love their tunes and it's like hey here's my kid yeah. and i mean like i've had some of those rock star moments where i'm just like oh yeah i'm hanging out with trey cool from green day yeah you know it's yeah. just like i like and he's apologizing to me about him being a dick to our band before i was joined the, before i joined the band you know it's i mean it's, it's weird like stories that you meet like people that you look up to and you realize that they're just like normal people yeah most of the time well especially with like matt talbot like what i what i was thinking about when you were talking about that was like at that time like you're young and you're like i fucking worship home you know but home was never that huge and they're just they're just they're just regular guy right so he's like yeah you want to pay me to record you of course he's needs to make it it's like you're looking at it now from like an adult perspective where you're now that age or even older than he was then sure and you know so now it's like you're looking at it and you're like yeah these are just some guys they were playing in this obscure rock band that had a moderate amount of success (laughs) out of champlain illinois and uh you know it's 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 a weird thing like when you're 19 you're like dude we're recording with the guy from home and he's like i've never made any money <laughs> you know <laughs> you know you know what i'm saying like it's it's an interesting thing you know uh, so. like, like, but art like brings in that that weirdos i mean like i mean yeah. like the, the self-expression like people are drawn to it you mm-hmm. know and like it's it's so cool like that someone can create something so brilliant with some friends and 20 years later from that you have these dumbass kids like you have beefs and butthead you wrote stars <laughs> uh-huh. you know <laughs> exactly. and it's just yeah. like but like they're willing to pay you and just like, they just want to hang out with you and just soak up a- any tidbit yeah. of information yeah. because like like what you did was so important to so many people and yeah. like there, there's there's a beauty if i wish that beauty and money translated you know For like, real. because yeah. it's like there's so much cool stuff in art and people should be making so much money and they should be rich yeah you know because like, those records were great dude downward is heavenward and you'd prefer an astronaut are fucking in my opinion still both masterpieces like uh, in in a lot of ways and I loved their new record too. Oh what do you think God. of the the new one they put out in what was it, twenty fifteen? It was the, or it was it was the CD of my of my summer. Yeah, it I was, loved it, man. Oh it, it, to me, it was like it felt like 
classic it was almost more classic home if you could say than even like downward is heaven Word, which is more spacey it was more, it was like surprisingly sludgy i was like man there the temples are are low the guitars are heavy no, i was like just... this is joyce like good for them for because a lot of the time you could i could have saw them like going folkier or something you know i wouldn't have doubted if they went they, in that they were going to a click track i mean they they yeah, they, it, they, yeah. they carved out all those fucking songs yeah. organically i was like this sounds like what was the name of the first record something 3000 or something electra 3000 yeah whatever right? it was i was like or maybe 8000 so- i don't know yeah it was like yeah. this sounds like that <laughs> i'm like they're really throwing it back mm-hmm. like they're they're coming with real shit like uh, it wouldn't have surprised me if i put it on it's like oh this is really like a lot of clean guitars and you know but like I wouldn't have been surprised. I was thrilled that it was so sludgy, you know? I, I do remember that, like, I mean, that band, like, they they got so good playing together in a room. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. They, I mean, and, and Matt said back years ago, he's like, when when they were on, was it Capitol Records? Yeah, they got that, yeah, uh, or Atlantic, possibly. I think it might have been, uh, yeah, it, it, I think it was Atlantic. I, I guess it, it really doesn't matter to me at this point, um, and y'all on the internet world can look it up, but... He, he told me, he's like, we used to practice like this was a full-time job. We would practice every yeah, single day for eight day. hours. Yep. This was our job. Yep. And like, holy, like, like what a rare gift to, yeah. to, to, to throw that at an art project, especially looking back on it, like from today's standards. Yeah. Because that, that, that rarely happens anymore. I mean, like, the, the, like very few artists today have that kind of time to, yeah. to, to devote, yeah. to have the label's just paying you to mm-hmm. to record or and just to write yeah to, to record your next develop, record you know development deals and stuff. i mean like know? that doesn't i mean i don't Not think at that all. It doesn't exist at all <laughs> no you know? yeah. it's a different yeah. industry yeah. Yeah. and awesome. it was it was Able dying put in the fucking time and really mm-hmm. craft something and spend that amount of effort on and then really fine tune it the mm-hmm. way you want as opposed to having to shit I, something out and i you know. re- so i really i almost like got in a in an altercation with this kid because he was giving, he was talking about how like Brian St. Pierre from like the drummer, like, and I may be yeah. saying his name wrong, like rest in peace, dude, like that just died, the drummer from home. I was going to bring him up too. He's yeah. one of the best in my opinion. He's one of the most musical drummers around. Nobody even, uh, he's, you, like if I joined home or if you joined home and you, it, he sounds like nobody else. No. I don't know how to even explain it. It's musical. It's not flashy. He's, he's not a chop monster, but he has such a great, sense of time and feel and just he's he's tasteful it's this weird touch that guy has like when you i'm sure you saw him live several times yeah. or whatever. anytime you'd see him like uh, it'd be like this guy like he's sort of irreplaceable because like i like i couldn't it's like i could play the parts but like it's but no, not, not like him sound the same not like, like him i don't even know how to describe it he's such a weird interesting drummer that guy was man mm-hmm. just unbelievable and it yeah it's man when he fucking passed away was it covid i think or it I, was right then or i i i, I don't know why and i and i and it, i i don't think they talked about it much and yeah I, and i and i have no idea and, and like i honestly like people i used to really want to know why people like left yeah, this earth right and now it's just like it doesn't matter yeah you know yeah. It, it doesn't like it's just because like they're not here anymore and that's 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 you know and, and, but and it I, was too soon, and he's oh, fucking. He was. They just got back together. I know, and they were gonna be touring more, and like you know, like he was always sort of the the one that because he had a real career too, from my understanding, okay. was that like so like the, the uh, some of the reason they weren't doing stuff sometimes was because he couldn't had do other it. things they, going on. I think it was the drummer for Shiner. Was, yeah, Jason uh, Gherkin was fucking playing oh. all stuff, like, and he's great too, but. Like I don't know, I don't, like man, that that guy, fucking Brian St. Pierre, was just like it, I don't even know how to describe it, dude. It was just there's certain people, not that, flashy, like he just had it. It was it was, but there I don't know. There was like there was also like he played some serious shit, and there was like a jazziness to it, <laughs> and like I don't know how to describe it. When you saw it live, you were just like, oh, this guy, like I like again, like I don't know how to describe, it, but if you sat in, it would be cool. But it wouldn't it sound would, it the would same. Be, but it wouldn't be that you know? cool. Yeah, <laughs> it just wouldn't be that guy. Yeah. And there's no way to replace that. So, like, I yeah. don't know. That, that really sucks that he's gone because he was a very, very unique mm-hmm. and amazing drummer, for sure. So, RIP. <laughs> Seriously, man. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. Okay. You know, man. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> What's that guy? I've been... Uh, 
<clears throat> trying to keep up on what's happening in the world lately. Sure, sure. But uh, I'm really having a hard time. I find that I can't find reliable information in today's uh, day and age. A lot of sources, a lot of noise out there, a lot of a lot of fake news, if you a will. A lot of fake news, yeah. man. It's hard to find out what's real and what's nonsense today. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. So I was hoping you could maybe help me out and explain to me what's happening in the world. Let's see if we can do a little something uh, here for the people. The Dangerville Podcast presents News of the World. <laughs> Ah, all right. It's dumber every week. <laughs> it's so the same lame shtick for we're now 30 episodes. <laughs> uh, you all want right. to start? I got some stuff this week, so you, you start. Right. Go we'll, ahead. We'll get it going here. First up right. on the docket, so we've got a bill would ban Michigan drivers from having dogs on laps while driving. Wow. So newly proposed legislation states that an individual shall not operate a motor vehicle with a dog... Uh, sitting in his or her lap. Okay. So the Vatican is actually proposing a similar law, noting that additional distractions beyond having a young boy's head in your lap while driving simply pose too <laughs> much of a safety risk to other motorists. The Vatican. Yeah. Wow. Come strong with the Vatican. Vatican. Yeah. Right off the bat, Coming right with the fucking Vatican material. <laughs> smash, smash, smash. All right. All right. Have you guys heard about this shit? Jen Psaki has a new show on MSNBC that will kick off this month. You guys heard of this? I have not. I've not heard of Jen Jen Psaki. Okay. Uh, Jen Psaki. Inside with Jen Psaki will debut March 19th, featuring interviews and political analysis from the former White House press secretary. So she was Joe Biden's first press Uh, secretary. Oh, yeah. The redheaded girl. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So her new show... Inside with Jen Saki. This, of course, is not to be confused with Miss Saki's debut feature film she made in college, <laughs> simply called Inside Jen Saki. <laughs> Inside with Jen Saki is the name name of her new show. Like, come on, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, the one writes itself is good to tune. All right, well, Saki it to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. Just made. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> All right. So next up, we've got Mexican president posts photo of what he claims is an elf. Did you see this one? <laughs> no. Really? Okay. So this, I saw this bad boy on Twitter. This was pretty wild. President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador Jesus, okay. posted a picture of what he believes to be an alux, a mischievous elf-like woodland spirit. Wow. All right. Yeah. Mexico actually has a long history of storied folklore, including the Chupacabra, the eight-hour workday, and the belief that Gabriel Iglesias is actually funny. That's <laughs> hey. true. Kidding. Just <laughs> jokes. Truly Just jokes, mythical. <laughs> In conclusion, Fluffy stinks. I don't get it. It's just bad. No good, huh? I never saw his. I've never. I've literally never seen any. Hey, you're not missing much. Carlos Mencia. Who's not even Mexican. I, <laughs> I had that joke eight different ways. One of them was uh, the belief that Carlos Mencia writes his own material. Yeah, that would have yeah. been good. That would have been good. Yep. All right. Have you guys heard about this shit? A hidden chamber within the Great Pyramid has been opened for the first time in 4,500 years. You hear this? I wow. did. Yeah. yeah. yeah I was, um... Yep. Egyptian officials announced the discovery of a hidden corridor above the pyramid's entrance. So it's kind of like... Above and to the right, I think. Measuring 30 feet long, the passage could serve as a jumping off point for additional research into the pyramid's mysterious inner chambers. Wow. Dun, dun, dun. This, of course, has sparked worldwide concern that should he be called upon to fight the mummy, <laughs> Brendan Fraser is simply not in fighting condition. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Oh, that's good material. Poor Brendan Fraser. He gets ripped on every episode. <clears throat> I thought you might be going with a Harrison Ford angle on that one there. Some kind of uh, well, Indiana Jones. Indiana, Indy, yeah. indeed. <laughs> Got to get Graham Hancock on the case investigating this thing, by the way. <laughs> that's where I heard about it, actually. This is, uh, oh, really? Yeah, his, he was talking about it for sure. Okay. Yeah, that Matt checks out. <laughs> All right, so a Florida art dealer pleads guilty in Warhol forgery scheme. Oh, okay. This one was pretty awesome. 
So a South Florida art dealer pled guilty in federal court in connection with a scheme involving the sale of fake Andy Warhol paintings. Wow. Several notable art critics examined the paintings with a keen eye, calling into question their uninspired nature and lack of creativity or artistic vision by the person who created them, stating that they looked like they could have been jun- or done by just about anyone. <laughs> they went on to say that the forgeries sucked too. <laughs> Warhawk stinks. Okay, okay. I see if where you're, you're going uh, If you're an asshole willing to pay a quarter million for a painting of a can of Campbell's, you deserve to get it's ripped Marilyn off. It's Marilyn Monroe, but this in different basically colors. basically my hero, yeah. Warhawk stinks. Sorry, Susan. I don't, she, okay, I don't know if she likes Andy Warhol, but I like Andy Warhol, okay? He's all right. Um, all right, let me see here. What do I got? Okay, this is a good one here. Uh Man found carrying a mummified corpse up to 800 years old in a food delivery bag in Peru. Did you guys see this uh, shit? Uh, I don't think right. I want to see this. Yeah, right. maybe, maybe I do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can pull it up here. Uh, an 800-year-old mummified corpse was found in a food delivery bag in Peru, authorities said. Photos released by the director of culture show a skeleton in the fetal position lying in a red bag with a reflective inner lining commonly used by food delivery companies. Wow. You shouldn't eat that. <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> I don't when, think you should eat that. When confronted, when, when confronting the man on why he was transporting a mummy, he claimed he was actually just a human trafficker. It just takes 800 years to get your order from Grubbo. <laughs> So stupid. <laughs> he said he was unconcerned because the tip is prepaid. <laughs> all right, all right, hold on. Hold on. Okay. I got more. I got more. I got an alternate submission here. On this, this dead horse. <laughs> I got an alternate submission. All right. <laughs> when confronted <laughs> why the, why he was transporting a mummy. He said he was unconcerned as Brendan Fraser is simply not in a fighting condition. Oh, man. All right. Wait, wait. I'm still not done. All right. Done. Jokes aside, this, this is what the guy actually said. This is for real. This is not a joke. He said, quote, it sleeps in my bedroom with me. There's my bed, the TV set next to it. There's Juanita. I take care of it. It's like, if you'll pardon the expression, as if it were my spiritual girlfriend. Whoa. That's what he said. Scans later found that the body is, in fact, a man. So a Juan <laughs> and not a Juanita. That, that's from the episode. <laughs> <laughs> or from the, it's like, there's no doubt this guy was fucking this oh, thing. Oh, yeah. He was fucking question, it. Dude. Come on. It's living next to his bed. It's his spiritual girlfriend. Bro. Oh, man. Yeah. I just I don't know how does this how does this go down? The the pictures. Let me see if I can fucking pull it up here real quick. In fairness, Nancy Pelosi's husband's been fucking a corpse for years. So. <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa, that's okay. For real, dude. It's Whoa. a for real mummy. What kind of creepy Dahmer esque motherfucker yeah, was in this the, guy? Dude? In the Domino's yeah. bag. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. Uh, yeah, look at that shit, dude. Wow, dude. His spiritual girlfriend. Sick fucker. Oh, man. Is it weird that I'm a little bit harder? You know? I know. Just saying. Not weird at all. All right, you got more? I got a couple more. I've got an endless amount of terrible material tonight, right, my friend. Let's keep it rolling. Right. Let's keep it rolling. So, <laughs> Iowa State University gets 169 confiscated baby tarantulas. What? Yes. Okay. So the U.S. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Service has donated 169 tarantulas that were confiscated, uh, gave them to Iowa State, where they'll join other venomous species of spiders and scorpions as permanent zoo residents. Oh, yeah. okay. Hospitals in East Palestine, Ohio, are using this as a case study for how to best handle an influx of unwanted eight-legged babies. 
in preparation for the situation they're likely to find themselves in nine months from now. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, uh, yeah. the uh, tarantulas arrived at Ohio State or Iowa State rather on Valentine's Day and were unboxed by the university's insect zoo staff. Program coordinator Ginny Mitchell commented, "At least someone was thoughtful enough to give me something on Valentine's Day." <laughs> Mark. Mark. Poor Mark. <laughs> Not my finest story. All right, moving right along. <laughs> Researchers. <laughs> it's, really good talk really, it's a really long song. Yeah. There. Researchers examine a 3,500-year-old brown bear preserved in the Siberian permafrost. Do you guys see this shit? Wild. Discovered on mainland Russia, the creature had its fur, skin, claws, teeth, body fat, and internal organs all still intact, which is, of course, an extremely rare occurrence. Indeed. That's yeah. craziness. When doctors tried to determine the cause of death, they found that the powdery white substance surrounding <laughs> the bear was not, in fact, permafrost, but was, of course, many kilos of cocaine. Cocaine, yes. Cocaine bear. Well played. Sir. Well played. <laughs> Ray Liotta's swan song, by the way. That's a hell of a way to go out for your last Indeed. <laughs> Cocaine, Cocaine bears. bears. <laughs> How that fuck is going to be remembered. I read last week that they're coming out with a, a meth alligator. Yeah. <laughs> some meth gator. Shit. Yeah. They got to. Florida man's <laughs> never been so man. wild. <laughs> Is that also based on a true story? Yes. Or is that some bullshit? Like, <laughs> it doesn't doesn't matter. No. It doesn't. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. It's true. Oh man. All right. So President Biden recently tweeted on some frustrations that he's got. <laughs> so he tweeted, I'm sick and tired of talking about trickle down economics. I ran for president to build the economy from the bottom up and the middle out. Additionally, he mentioned that he's sick and tired of answering questions about his name, where he is, or how he got there, saying, I'm not sure how many different ways I can say it. I literally have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor yeah. Joe. All right. Uh, have you heard about the vegan motorist in Maine? Yes, I saw one? this one. Hey, did you see this one? Did you hear this? <laughs> you see this? Can you hear about that? Vegan motorist in Maine appeals to keep naughty vanity license plate. So a Maine vegan whose custom license plate contains the word tofu, uh, one of the motorists caught in a state crackdown on vulgar license plates. So the plate read, <laughs> love tofu, L-U-V-T-O-F-U, <laughs> which could easily translate to love to fuck you. <laughs> All right, so it's love to F you. <laughs> the motorist insisted that there was no mistaking his intent because the back of his car had several tofu related stickers. And also because since he's a vegan, he's clearly not getting any pussy. <laughs> 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 That's good material. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Kim Kardashian is actually embroiled in a similar battle with the state. Really? You hear about this? No, yeah. No. yeah, she's arguing that her I Ride DK license plate is uh, purely a <laughs> reference to a preferred character in Mario Kart. So, yeah. hey, pretty, pretty, I Ride pretty good. I Ride DK. Yeah, I was pretty happy with that one. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right, I got a, got a little more here. A few more. La Nina. La Nina, which worsens hurricane and drought, is gone. It's finished. You guys wow. hearing this shit? After three nasty years, the La Nina weather phenomenon that increases Atlantic hurricane activity uh, and worsens western drought is gone, says the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Wow, that's quite a fucking group. How do you get into that fucking Indeed. thing? Uh, good news for the United States and other parts of the world, including the drought-stricken Northeast Africa, scientists said. Unfortunately, scientists also confirmed that new metal band Il Nino is still together and will be releasing new music soon. Yeah, Il Nino is still out there. Well done. Well done. <laughs> you got more? Uh, of course I got more. All right. I got one more here. So. All right. We're going to edit this one down a little bit. We're going to take that little guy out of there. <laughs> Editing during the show. 
<laughs> that word's gotta go. <laughs> Can't say you that. Got on fucking this. headphones that are inoperable and jokes <laughs> during the show. This is, a, this is a class operation over here. So, all right, uh, a full moon, a rare final full moon of winter season, is called the Worm Moon and appeared Monday and Tuesday of last week. Okay. An accompanying rare. F- oh, we're gonna skip past that part here. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to self out of this one. All right. So in addition to this, there was another uh, solar, lunar, what have you event that brought a close positioning of Venus and Jupiter in the western sky, which made them available uh, to be visible for about an hour right after sunset. Additionally, with the use of a carefully placed mirror held at just the right angle, some stargazers were even able to see Uranus. <laughs> Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, 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 pretty good. Uranus. We'll follow up on the edited part <laughs> offline. It was good material, but uh, maybe a little bit. I'm too not much. editing it, any of that. <laughs> All right, do you got any more? Because I got one more. I got one more, my friend. Okay, I'll go and you can close it off. All right. A man was critically injured in a stabbing incident. At Brand Steakhouse and Grill, yeah. right here in Grand Rapids, yeah. Michigan, wow. last month. Did hear about did you guys this. hear about this yeah. shit? Yeah, oh, I did. A man suffered serious stab wounds Tuesday, January 31st, in a fight with another customer at Brand Steakhouse and Grill in Wyoming. Why? That's Wyoming, Michigan, for those folks in Wyoming State. Our millions of listeners there. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be confused. The 34-year-old stabbing victim was in critical condition after undergoing surgery. A motive for the crime is still under investigation, but it is believed the man took the last chicken wing without asking. <laughs> it's an egregious <laughs> stab-worthy offense, to be sure, dude. Oh, I keep the same one. goddamn same fucking one. motherfucker. <laughs> My Simon Says game is not the best here. We're going to get these fucking things labeled one of these weeks. Yeah, right, no, that was a fresh one. All right, last but not least, we've got Cardi B. A girl, Cardi B, begins court-ordered community service. Oh, poor Cardi. So Grammy-winning rapper Cardi B spoke to girls in a police mentorship program as part of her court-mandated community service for her role in a pair of brawls in a New York City strip club in 2018. Wow. Cardi is also awaiting uh, awaiting sentencing by the FDA for her crimes against taste buds and her involvement (laughs) in the distribution of rap snacks dating back to 2020. (laughs) Okay. Little rap snacks throwback, nothing on that. What's up, guys? (laughs) If you go back, 15 episodes we were eating rap snacks on the show they still have those i guess yeah they're breaking them out cardi b we had the snoop ones they were uh, not good no they're they awful good. the worst chips ever in fairness the cardi b ones are about two years old i bought them during mm-hmm. covid i picked okay. them up from my office yeah. once we were able to return we uh we broke those bad boys out so they weren't in, the, in its prime, <laughs> prime yeah. moment in, yeah Really robbed the true delicious, I'm sure, flavor from uh, from when they were first made. All right, is that all the news? That, ladies and all gentlemen, right. thankfully ends another lackluster instance of... The Dangerville Podcast presents News of the World. <laughs> Just You're bad. Welcome. Really, You're really welcome. awful as always. <laughs> no, that was solid material. That's clutch. Talking about mummies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got I got a thing, another thing I want to talk about here. Let me see if I can fucking get this pulled up. Have you guys seen the list uh, that Rolling Stone did? It's like the best songs by fake bands. Oh no! So music fans rank. Here's the Rolling Stone one, and I got I think I got the top ten pulled up right now. the The best songs by fake bands, and then they put it on Ranker. And the people voted, you know, and it's way better. Like, so to like, clarify, we're not talking like cover bands, like not, not talking not chat joke GPT, bands. Like no, no like, 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 like from movies okay. and characters oh, okay. and shit. Okay. Yep. So, all right. So here's the actual Rolling Stones list, which is kind of bullshit. And that's why we'll look at the other one. 
So number ten, we got straight out of low catch by CD4. <laughs> Which well, to that, be fair, I mean that's, that's gold. That movie is gold. That, that, yeah, it's, it's that movie's fucking like Chris Rock right now. <laughs> Little teaser for later. We got to get yeah. into this Chris Rock. Yeah, we'll talk about Chris he, Rock. He, he nailed Easy E, man. He, oh yeah. yeah. Oh man, it's just like CB4. So that's dude. gold. Yeah. I never even heard of this. Light of Day by the Barbusters. Apparently, so it's Michael J. Fox. Ah. Apparently, they they wrote a movie called Born in the USA that was supposed to star fucking Bruce Springsteen. Yep. And then it didn't happen. <clears throat> Bruce Springsteen did that song, and then they still did the movie with these other people, and like this is the song. But I've never even heard of this. I didn't know any of this. So huh. That seems like yeah. a weak submission for number uh, nine. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Dude, these, this top ten is bullshit. It's like that fucking list we yeah, did the, the other day. Yeah, top 50 rapper, yeah. Uh, Finest Girl by Connor For Real from fucking it's Andy Samberg, pop star, never stop, never stopping, which is funny. Did you see but, that uh, flick? Number eight, no. Who saw that flick? I watched like, it. Yeah, I'm it's sure it was moment. funny. Andy Samberg is funny. But. I don't get this reference at all. I'm old. Yeah, he, you know who Andy Samberg is, right? The, nope. uh, he was from SNL. He's done a lot oh, of like, okay, yep. like the Lonely Island and like, I'm on a boat, motherfucker. I'm oh, on a like, boat. actually, that's yeah, the... He's gr- that growing up in Muskegon, I, I bring yeah. that up like on yeah, occasion. Yeah, so yeah, this, yeah, this is good. Yeah. Okay, I know. I know. You had a okay. boat, didn't you? Yeah. Your <laughs> I did. My, my old man had a boat. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So like, I I know the type. You're like, I don't get it. This is not funny. <laughs> no, I fucking get it. It just doesn't yeah. resonate with us. Uh, as we're surrounded by fourteen. Uh, at my bartending job, I, I, yeah. I deal with a lot of those dudes yeah. that have boats. I gotta say, the whole Lonely Island thing before you go on. Wildly overrated. Never thought it was one bit funny. The pop star movie was funny. Was funny. You know. yeah, I don't know. He did that Overrated. movie with fucking uh, with Jon Snow that was kind of funny where they were like tennis players or now whatever. That was see a that? funny fucking movie. That was pretty yeah, funny. That movie I'll allow. Um, all right, moving on. Best of Both Worlds by Hannah Montana coming in at number seven. I don't really know the Hannah Montana stuff, but I could see why that would be up there. It's probably got a lot of numbers behind it. For not knowing about Hannah Montana, you have a shocking amount of posters up here. I know. (laughs) Yeah, the podcast. Miley Miley Cyrus. It's mildly (laughs) disconcerting there, you know. School of Rock coming in at number six. School of Rock. That's a pretty good submission, I'd say, overall. And mind you, this is the top 10 out of 50 here, so. Uh, hustle and flow. It's hard out here for a pimp. <laughs> That's a big song, though. I never saw that. I don't know this one either, so I never saw hustle and flow. Uh, Was but, that a Terrence Howard? Yeah, flick, I want yeah, to yeah. Say? That's okay. him. I think he plays DJ from Hustle and Flow. Did Terrence Howard do the song? Do you know? He or must have, or, or at least he like did it in the movie. He okay. like lip synced it or something. Uh, Juicy J. Blah blah blah. That's too long. Not gonna read it. <laughs> Josie and the Pussycats coming in at number four. The the fucking modern. Yeah, I didn't see this. Is that like this. Tara Reid or something? Yeah. Like what the fuck? But <clears throat> it's Adam Schlesinger song from Fountains of Wayne. You know Adam Schlesinger? Oh, like he, oh that, okay. That's yeah. that's like the secret weapon. Also, R.I.P. He died of COVID. What? In, yeah, yeah, in fucking 2020, early in New York, because oh, those are New York guys. But Jeez. I'm a huge Fountains of Wayne fan, and that guy wrote many TV songs and fucking uh, Broadway stuff and all that kind Didn't of shit. Didn't he do the the um the Tom Hanks like the the band? Yeah, like, that uh, thing you do yeah, is his song. That, I mean, uh, dude, Cranky I mean, like, Anchors, the theme song to that, which was uh, sung by the guy from Fountains of Wayne. Dead? The other guy. He, yeah. He's, why these fuckers keep yeah. dying? I know. What's wrong with these know. fucking dying assholes? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Like, there's more time. Like, yeah. that, like those like, guys are only f- not even fifty. I don't think. Could nobody know? get like, this guy set up with some ivermectin? For real. What's I just like on, just man? like stop dying. I don't care what you got to do. Just stop this guy's a horse to warmer. Yeah. I mean, just like, early on, whatever, man. Whatever it is, live longer, dude. Stop being a bitch. Yeah, you're letting people down. You got lo- more stuff to do. More songs to write. For real. R.I.P. Adam Schlesinger, though. He was an amazing songwriter. Jeepers. Wrote some really, really great stuff. Uh, moving on, Shallow from A Star Is Born coming in at number three here. Okay. Um. Shout out to fucking Andy Inglot, whose undying pa- uh, passion for the hatred of this song just burns inside him. He hates this song with such a fucking passion. It's so funny. We were in L.A. when the Oscars were going down for this song, and he was had opinions. <laughs> Some things to say. He really hated it. 
<laughs> two <laughs> thoughts so on this. One, I feel like any actual musician right. should be yeah. exempt from uh, this right, list, right? right? right, right like, right, yeah, it's yeah. a fake band or whatever. I just had some fucked up shit going on in my headphones, by the way. These things are crap. Don't worry about it, man. They're in on. In any event. <laughs> uh, it's kind of, uh, I don't know. It's, just, yeah. it's a little bit yeah. bonk having an actual musician on this list. Having yeah. said that and tabling the potential terribleness of the song according to Inglot, the movie <laughs> and Lady Gaga in it were both choice, man. Huge fan never, of this Never flick. actually saw it, but yeah. It's a dominant flick, and she yeah, fucking indeed. crushes it. it, it. It's, it's a good movie. It's really, really yeah, good. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. And that Bradley Cooper that. is one hot potato, mm. if I do say so myself. Son of a bitch. I do fucking it's love... a good-looking uh, man. Good I love man. fucking uh, Lady Gaga, though, for, like, for real. She's got some banger songs. Scotty Doesn't Know, coming in at number two. You guys remember <laughs> yes, Scotty Doesn't dude. Know? It's oh, great, that's amazing. Mm, it's a great team. What is this from? Uh, from Euro Trip, it's fucking Matt Damon did a fucking. Uh, <laughs> hey, you don't remember that? <laughs> Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. It's about. It's this like random cameo from fucking Matt Damon. It's about, about Matt a, Damon doing this song about banging this guy's yeah, girlfriend while this guy's his girlfriend. girl is or, uh, while the dude's in yeah. the audience. Yeah, it's, it's fucking. fucking uh, funny. That's Matt Damon, and that's fucking. Uh, is the, that Jason C. No, it's the other Wilson. Not Owen Wilson. It's Luke Wilson. Oh, Ooh, yeah, yeah. Euro okay. Trip. Scotty doesn't know. Great song. Pretty funny movie. I'm going to allow Euro Trip. Shane. And number one think, yeah. coming in. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a that's a huge call. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. That thing you probably should audibly banger. state that for the uh, And he they made like, the list twice, you know? Yeah, like <laughs> Top 10, Adam Schlesinger coming in, talking about fucking uh, Denise and fucking radiation vibe. Another great flick, man. It's that like thing you do, so underrated good. flick great, I haven't seen in a long time. Movie. Really good movie. Oh. That whole South Park episode about Guitar Hero, they did that yeah. whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Give me something snappy. Yeah. You know, that whole bit from that movie. <laughs> All right, so they dumped this onto Ranker, because some of those are kind of bullshit fucking calls, let's be honest. So the fucking, let the people decide here a little bit. <laughs> Coming in at number one is Scotty Doesn't Know. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Damon, fucking great. Number two, School of Rock. That works. Number three, that thing you do. Like, this is a little more, I think. Uh, we are Sex Bomb. I don't know what, I don't even know what that is. Coming in at number four, we are Sex Bob Bomb. Sex Bob, like, Let's get a little click it's on from that. oh, what it's from Scott from? Pilgrim versus it's the world, world, which I never saw. That, that that's movie. a good movie, is that's, it? Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. the Michael Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, coming in at number five is On the Dark Side. This is what I was fucking looking for. On the Dark Side by Eddie and the Cruisers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fucking great classic, song. Classic, That's yeah, a classic song, right? Yeah, it's a banger. Yeah. Shallow still fucking being here at number six. Uh, I don't know what this is. Some, some From a Goofy movie. 121 or something like that. That seems questionable. Yeah, from a Goofy movie. I don't know. Okay. Let's Go to the Mall. By Robin Sparkles. I don't know what the fuck that is either. Like, how is this uh, coming in at number eight of all time? It's like, from an yeah. episode of the show called How I Met Your Mother, if you yeah, remember that. I oh, do. That, that's great. That's yeah. a great series. Yeah, that's a good show. Coming in at number eight of all time, though, here. There's also know. some mush plug posters in that show. So. Oh, is there really? Nice. Yeah. Hey, yeah. getting those fat royalty checks rolling. None, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, zero for that. Coming in a strongly worded uh, note to Neil Patrick Harris on that. Let's see what's going on, dude. Get the lawyers on that one. Yeah. Coming in at number nine, though, Big Bottom by Spinal Tap. Now we're number one. Yeah. Yeah. That should be, yeah. come on, that I needs mean. to be way up there, dude. Fuck yeah. Uh, does that same DJ song, <laughs> Walk there. Hard by Dewey Cox. Oh, man, that's <laughs> yeah, good. That's good. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about. Baby on Board by the B-Sharps oh, and the Simpsons. Oh, man. That's classic shit classic right there. Classic episode, uh -huh. classic tune. Fever Dog, Ah. Oh. You know that? I don't. Yeah. Even, I don't know what that is. But that's like, oh, from Almost Famous. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, okay. Like, okay. That's I remember. Yeah. It's a good. It's a good. That flip. makes sense. Quick uh, side note: Did you ever see? Um, it was a show called Roadie. So Cameron Crowe. Yeah. Did HBO, Almost Famous right? right? Uh, yeah. Showtime. I want to say. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that was a pretty choice show. It didn't. It didn't last too long. One season. Yeah. One <laughs> <laughs> it goes on like this. You got a fucking Partridge Family. Okay, it stinks. There's nothing else. I went through the list earlier, and there's nothing. I was thinking, though, like, I was like, well, doesn't that song from The Bodyguard count? 
because that's like her song in the movie, but it's a real song. But then it's also and like, but it's also a Dolly Parton song from 30 years earlier. Yeah. Like, how does that fit in there? You know, like exempt for that reason and mm-hmm. see previous comments about actual musicians not being able to be. Yeah, like, you know. indeed. Sure. Indeed. I'm surprised that like the Whitney didn't have a hit on that. I mean, that's that. I mean, that that, that would rank that. Exactly. And I. Right. But that, yeah, so I was going to make this big fucking stink about it. Like, how is this not on the fucking list? And I was like, well, that's also like a real song from fucking Dolly Parton wrote that back in the day. You know. <laughs> All right. So one of them on there, the first one I think we looked at was CB4. Chris Rock. <laughs> yeah. Got in the, or gotta get into this Chris Rock special. Yeah. Did you happen to live, see? I have not seen this yet. And, yeah. and like that, this is one of my weekend watch plans because, okay. because apparently Will Smith had a rebuttal and he was hurt by it. That's what the news said. <laughs> today yeah, which yeah. as I, I think that he should feel more than hurt because like i mean like what a ridiculous response to anything like, yeah i mean like like what great tv to watch that shit go down seriously it's, it's like, i think chris rock's cheek has the uh more right claim to be heard out of it was like an episode of punk it's right. like where's ashton like are we really fucking watching this in real time right now you know yeah yeah, it was amazing. So I watched the special last night, and I got to say, I'm a big Chris Rock fan. I, I was like thinking Chris about this. He's yes. really funny. Yeah, man. And I didn't watch the special he did a couple years back, and I've been watching the time stand up lately. Chris Rock might be my favorite comedian. I, I don't. I hesitate to say that. I have to do a little deeper dive. His he's early, right up there, man. his earlier stuff, man, it's, it's extremely it's so funny. good, dude. So, so good. Before getting into the actual material in the special, I got to call out what was the deal with the outfit, dude? He's wearing this all white all thing white. Mm-hmm. with like sleeves rolled up to here. He's got these big platform shoes. Yes, yeah, because he's short. He looked like a really stylish <laughs> janitor from Studio 54. Yeah, he's got these huge lifts going on in his shoes. Yeah. yeah. And he's wearing a Prince fucking, uh, which to be fair is dope as shit. I wish I had a Prince fucking necklace. He's got a huge diamond encrusted <laughs> Prince symbol. Yeah, like that was prince. gold. <laughs> I gotta watch this. So I, yeah, yeah. Well, we're gonna prince ruin it for you hard. a little bit. No, right please, now. It's, it's, it's good. <laughs> I'm not getting into any specific jokes, but I, I, I will give you I'm first uh, first crack at it here. I know you've got huge opinions, huge as opinions. do I. I'm curious to hear yours. What's your take on that, my friend? So, for one, it was this. It was live on Netflix. It was their first thing they've ever done live, right? So, like to watch uh, it that night was like it's streaming now. Whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen, <laughs> which is cool. Yeah. That's cool. You know, like there's other ways to do that, but Netflix hasn't done it before. Mm. Um, so that's cool. Um, he did honestly. He seemed a little nervous. He stumbled through He's, a few jokes. He stumbled yep. right off the bat. Yep. And, it, and it's like, I'm fucking criticizing him. Like, I'm fucking up there, you know. But like, he, he stumbled right off the bat. And then he fucked up another joke later on with a different. Uh, he fucked up the name yep. of the movie he was trying to shit on Will Smith about. Yep. Okay. Which I gotta say on that though, as someone who frequently stumbles like a fucking drunken stone. And you're idiot reading it off a computer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, all right. If yeah. Chris Rock is granted yeah. a little liberty and fucking stumbles that's over That's not that's fine. That was, he's uh, human. That made he's me, human. That yeah. made me feel better. I'm just saying that that happened. You're totally right about the fucking crazy platform shoes. It's like, dude, you're on the stage. Like it, nobody can tell how fucking tall you it was are. A you don't much. Know. It was some Doc Martin situation they were like, all souped up. You gotta have a four inch on lift there. on there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I thought I thought the whole thing was just a little weak. I got to be honest with you. I thought the he started out like the special itself, the, like the, pro- the jokes, the material. Yeah. All right. It comes out. He's he's real strong right at first. And then to me, the whole like middle section was just fucking boring. We were just like bored. And like, I'm just like, eh. Hey, that's the jokes weren't that funny. He's talking about his kids and stuff, and like it just wasn't that funny. And then he does like ten minutes at the very end about the Will Smith shit, and I'm just kind of like, dude, you could have written a full hour about this. Like people are here to hear, to hear you talk about yeah. this. Like you don't need to go. I get if you don't want to go all in on it or whatever and make it your, but like you could have done like a fucking half hour on this and t- laid into it way more than he did. And like, it just wasn't that much of it. Like, I, I don't know. I thought he could have done if it was like, Oh, I got another hour of gold. But to me, it was like, he had like 15 minutes of gold, a half hour of fucking snooze fest. 
and then 10 minutes at the end talking about fucking Will Smith and this whole situation. So I kind of like, respect that he didn't ride the coattails of I can that, see that situation too, yeah. the whole time. Right. right? Like, I, mean, I thought everyone, that was he, pretty cool. I, I mean, everyone wanted to know that he was going to talk about it. I mean, everyone, For sure. sure. Like, yeah. you got to yeah. acknowledge it. But he it had was, to address it. Yeah. 100%. But that's also, it's like, this is also why you're getting the fucking Netflix live stream Well, that's a little bit of an overstatement, bro. He's getting the Netflix thing because he's Chris fucking Rock. Like, he's never done anything before. <laughs> like, yeah. No, let's just not forget. Okay, it here. is. Yeah. You're right, but at the same time, also, you see what I'm saying too. Yeah. Where like, this is a big. You know, it's literally a year to the day from the Oscars. It's like I think the Oscars is this weekend, and that was a weekend before. Like this is like timed in a way that it's like purposefully marketed this way right, and shit. Right. So there's stuff like that. Like. I just didn't think it was that fucking funny. Like, I'm sorry. Like, it was it was fine. But like, I got to say, I was a little bored. I was just a little bored through the fucking middle of it. It was just kind of like, oh, Jesus. All you right. know. So I've got a little different take. All right. So I guess to acknowledge that it was almost as much one man show, so to speak, as it was a stand up special. And by that, I mean, like, it was a lot of commentary on what's going on and humor kind of interspliced mm-hmm. within that as opposed to like set up punchline mm-hmm. boom 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 type it's kind of like it, what? it's a little slower a little yeah. slower yeah i really liked that aspect of it and god bless comedians for being the one group of people in life that can still kind of tell it how it is unapologetically and without being afraid like he was calling out some absurd shit that i'm not gonna get into because i don't want to get my fucking self canceled But, like, he was pretty spot on with a lot of his social commentary. The other thing I would challenge you to do is to rewatch it under this context. Super high. I thought, no, no, I was was actually stone, well, by stone sober, I mean, I had, like, three cocktails in me, which is about as close as I get these days. So you're feeling normal at this point. Yeah, yeah, fair. That's that's my baseline, to be fair. I mean... But I thought it was the weakest crowd, and maybe, I don't know, maybe they had your take and just didn't dig the material, I thought that he was touching on so many subjects that were so sensitive in today's climate that people were literally afraid to laugh. And I thought the crowd was so weak Mm. that it kind of tinged it and made it feel like it might not be as funny as it is. Because I was laughing my ass off. I thought it was great. And I'm just like, these people are giving them nothing for some gold material. So I would say give it a couple weeks here when you get bored and have an hour rewatch it try and ignore the crowd which i know is like half of the thing that gets you amped up for yeah, yeah but nonetheless yeah. man like i thought it was pretty fucking funny pretty well delivered. yeah i'm not saying it's like total garbage or anything like yeah. it's not worth watching at all but... i do have i have one massive bitch with it i think <laughs> you're shoes? gonna second me on oh yeah <laughs> besides the uh the grotesque attire save for the the dominant prince necklace he blatantly ripped off the premise and like the first couple of punchlines of the Bill Burr abortion stuff from Bill Burr's recent. Oh, for real? Did you remember that? No. Uh-uh. The whole, like, you know, I'm pro-abortion. I'm pro-women having the choice to murder babies, basically, which was, you know, yeah. more yeah, articulately doing the, doing the shtick, done, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But that was literally Bill Burr's whole premise and kind of like the right. big standout thing from his setup. So uh, okay. was it, do you think that he knew about it or you think that he was just like, um, I mean, it's, Oh, sorry. Go ahead, man. No, I just—I mean, do you think that it was just like he didn't really understand that Bill Burr had already done it? Could be. I would Could assume be. that he had to have known, though, right? Like Bill Burr is one of his few peers at that yeah. level. Yeah. You, you yeah. almost can't not know about that if so, you're. So him, was it in right? like, homage? Like, was he continuing it, or was it was it like I need to watch it? So like, this is my, this is like weekend like homework. For yeah, me. I'd have to compare him because I don't really remember Burr's, but it's also kind of like. There's kind of only so many takes you can have on that in a way, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's and in fairness, yeah. he did kind of take yeah, it a step fair. further and like certainly yeah, had he, his own. Even like, his own twist on it. Blowing out a take on and above and beyond Burr, but it was pretty spot on. I was like, yeah. oh, dude, you got to kind of rethink this a little bit. But, but yeah, what you're saying your point, about like a social commentary, kind of the one man show kind of thing, is I feel like a lot of these fucking. This is the same thing that Dave Chappelle did on his last special, and it's and it keeps going in this direction. Is when when these comedians get super big and it seems to be the bigger they are the more they lean into this the comedy 
dies off and the social commentary shit goes up. This was my same thing I was talking about of fucking uh, of Dave Chappelle's last special, right. the big one that was all, all about this sort of controversial about trans, etc. Quote unquote. You become uh, unrelatable. Yeah, it just well, it's just like they just get like you're just they're just up there like talking about just trying to get their point of view across, but the jokes aren't there. And to me, I'm just kind of like, you can get your point across, but you still got to come with the comedy. Like you are a comedian. And especially if you're like in that Dave Chappelle comedy, he literally calls himself, literally calls himself the greatest of all time in this. And I'm like, yeah, dude, but you've only had three jokes so far and you're fucking 40 minutes into this. So the the overall eh. sentiment of that, I agree with 100 percent where I think I disagree a little bit. Like, he did a pretty good job playing both sides of the fence for every one of these quote-unquote political jokes, right? Like, yeah, he was going off on conservatives versus liberals equally. He was going, like, it was playing both sides. It didn't necessarily, to me, feel like he was pushing an agenda or trying to get his point of view no. across. He was yeah. just saying, this is crazy for these reasons, and then kind of hitting that both. Right. But to your point, Which any- I hate when people try to make it all political and just get the... Get the claps instead of the laughs, right? Yeah, like say yeah, the yeah. Thing yeah. That's going to appease like, them. Yeah. Well, yeah, especially if they're fucking virtual signaling, virtue signaling. Right, but right. what I'm saying is that what you're saying there is like, okay, any political pundit or talk show host or something can do that. We can do that right now, but I'm not being funny, right? right. You know, so like if you are a comedian right you're putting a show on your show and you are saying i'm a comedian that means you are here to make people laugh and it's like all right like if you are the gig if you're a one-man show you say i'm doing a one-man show on broadway you're fucking henry rollins or whatever you know (laughs) like you can do that okay but that's not what these guys are and it's not what they're billing themselves as so Mm -hmm. it's like if you are claiming that you're a comedian which obviously these guys are you got to still come with the funny. Yeah. You got to make jokes that make people laugh. If you just want to do a one man show, then you need to bill it as that. Dave Chappelle does a one man show on stage See, with I the still, mic. Or and whatever. this is like the slight. I, I thought it was funny. Like I was entertained. I was laughing. Like it was yeah, a little yeah. different. It's not, it's not not like there's yeah. no jokes, but it was it, a different path to the end but it was still one that i thought was funny yeah i told i get your point it's mm-hmm. like i don't want to wait 10 minutes like you got to get to the fucking uh get to the chorus get, yeah don't bore us get <laughs> to the chorus yeah. you know? as a lover of my time. laboring 20 words when five will do the same thing in my own personal jokes i'm willing to wait a little bit yeah, for Chris Rock yeah. to get to the i just end. think these guys get a little fucking up their own ass a little bit and they want to fucking do their own point it's like do that on your podcast you know like Joe Rogan's not doing his comedy bits on his podcast. You can just talk about whatever the fuck you want. So you can get that stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Then you got to fucking bring the funny on your thing. And I don't think fucking Chris Rock and I'm more so with the Chappelle thing. Less so Chris Rock was definitely still more like material, but it was just, I just didn't think it was that spectacular right yeah. it, was, it was fine it's mm-hmm. fine and i'm sure if you're there it's funny or a course you know but like i don't know the middle the middle 30 you know it got a little dull <laughs> like, i'm also gonna say i thought it was super badass it was just live no cuts no fucking oh yeah. I, I muffed this part i'm gonna edit it like it was kind of cool yeah he fucks to up, see he fucks like up, the raw you know? version yeah. of For that real. and not like the super distilled mm-hmm Ver, you know lens of perfection that you see in every other true because most so comedy cool specials that. are taped over three or four nights right. Right. They, and they, they cut it together so it, it is together. cool that it's one yeah. just yeah. straight up like this is who i am yeah. it's a ballsy move and uh, you know good for fucking him dude he went out there and did the fucking thing i mean you're live mm-hmm. in front of millions of people now it's different than like you're live in front of the audience but you know you got that safety net that if you fuck up you're gonna edit that out on the neck and you're gonna get that dude, joke on the next show, my girlfriend so. tonight's like everything you say right now is gonna be on the internet forever forever dude forever yeah. but i mean like yeah. that that comes with great like like you have to kind of fucking check yourself yeah i, I mean so it, it it's well our millions of fans <laughs> well yeah gonna, but i mean like, gonna... <laughs> and then it's not, but just not me but i mean like chris rock i mean yeah. like i mean like it just like 
your voice lives on now. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, of course, like no one's gonna, ever going to listen to this shit. For like, real. There's, there's <laughs> other lives to live and they, they're way more important than all this shit. But I mean, like when you get to a certain point, like you can't ever turn that off. Yeah. And so everything you say or do yeah. is completely scrutinized. Yeah. And like, fuck, like what? Like, I, like that to me is like, like I get anxiety about going to a bar that I'm like, oh, these all these fuckers know me. Like I don't like I don't like like I'm like socially the, like I like to like not be around people most of the time because like I I play in a band and I bartend and I'm a booking agent and like my my job is to be like social all the time and so like and on my quiet nights, I don't want to talk to fucking anybody. I don't, right. don't want to be noticed. I don't yeah. want to make I, like the last thing I want is to talk about fucking like mustard plug or any of this shit. Like so. I, I, I'm on such a small scale. So like guys like this, like they can't leave their place without paparazzi. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they don't have, they have nothing. Like yeah. they, they can't hide from anyone. Yeah. But the thing, the, the unfortunate thing, and I want to make a careful distinction between like legitimately being a douchebag and saying shitty things because you're a shitty person <laughs> And being <laughs> being a comedian who makes off color jokes that's the in gig. the interest of yeah, comedy. Yeah, and that's the the what Will Smith and it's, do, did. It was like completely like 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 what drove him to do that? Yeah. Like 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 what like what in his life made him to go up on the Golden Globes and slap a, a dude? Yeah. Like yeah, I'm man. sorry. Like and like like could have punched him. Uh, I hey. mean, like, if he was really that bent out of shape about it, yeah. like, it was like a duel. It was like, yeah. I mean, it was, it was <laughs> so <laughs> silly. Uh, pistols like, at dawn. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, like, I mean, like, if he was really gonna go for it, he should have punched the guy out. Like, you know. So, well, like, yeah, it just, it's, but I, but I feel bad for all these people that, like, like he cracked under pressure. Oh yeah, that was. I mean, whew. Like, like it was a career and then he ending, wins, and then he wins the Oscar <laughs> ten minutes later. Man, it's so wild, crickets, dude. dude. Well, I mean, so like, good. The, it's, it's so sad. It's been beaten to death, but it's a hundred percent true, and it warrants being restated. Right? Like it was obviously a situation where that dude's been catching shade about the situation with his oh, wife, dude. What a, for a very long time. That's so rough. Dig man. your own been, grave, dude. Probably so being brutal. called bitch made behind the scenes. Uh by everybody and their brother for years and then on a national stage you try to do something to puff your chest up Mm -hmm. and you go up and you slap a dude who's fucking 4-2 or however (laughs) tough this rock is and show everybody what a man you are for standing up. What a back I just so So it's all posturing it's all this fucking bullshit and it's unfortunate. Yeah it's fucking wild man. (laughs) I gotta get into one more thing. I don't know if you guys saw this this one was amazing. This blew my mind did you guys see that Putin bestowed the friendship award on Steven Seagal, baby. No, <laughs> oh my I God. did see the photos of that. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. You can't make this up, man. No. Thank this was you. incredible. This was so awesome. <laughs> and I somehow I couldn't even do it as a news joke. I was like, we got to talk about this shit, man. But like, apparently, Seagal has dual citizenship in Russia. Yeah, he has yeah. for a long time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's a thing. And uh, he. He was honored with the Order of Friendship, which I don't know what that is, uh, given to him by Russia. Like, they see he's contributed all this shit for, like, bettering international relations. I guess he was a vocal supporter of Russia when they, like, uh, annexed Crimea back Russia's in the day. Russia's great. But of all, like... It's not going to age well. <laughs> yeah. oh, he wanted none of that. He's like, "Oh, thanks, Vlad. You can go ahead and keep that, uh, keep that shine, bro. I don't want yeah, that part." Good of luck it. with that, bud. Putin has waged war on nations. He has ordered the deaths of however many countless hundreds of thousands of people. He's commissioned a picture of himself being painted shirtless on horseback. <laughs> and his unadulterated does. admiration of Steven Seagal <laughs> is the thing I find most questionable Hell about yeah, all man. his actions yeah, in the last yeah. few years. It is pretty... I mean, have you seen Under Siege? <laughs> that, like, do you, like, like, at Under what, Siege rules. At I'm what like point do you, like, do you just have this, like... <laughs> This boner for Steven Seagal, like I mean, like 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 I just crazy. like like no part of my normal human human existence, and I'm like, man, 
Steven Seagal. Oh, I just like, I just, like where, where, like where in machismo does this, does, does this, does this show up? Like, I just, I want to know because maybe I'm not a man. Like, it, 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 really, it really kind of fucks with my identity a little bit because I'm just like, I just don't see it. And like, I just want someone to like lay it out for me and just like explain it to me like, like I'm like, like I've never read before. So I'm like, like spell out all the letters and like, because I just like i don't like i'm just so confused and baffled <laughs> and kind of like all right like this is like if, if that's not america i don't know what is like Dude, this Steve- is the most un-american american thing ever steven seagal is a low talking fucking sword catching oh. sword swiping yes. neck breaking oh. badass motherfucker. yeah man He's calm and collective <laughs> kind of talks like this and you know, you, you know he's thinking about everything you're saying. <laughs> Just Big plotting pause. his next yeah. move. Dude. Seagal's the man. He's going to cut your head off. Did you guys see, I never watched this, but he had like a reality show where he became a legit cop. He was like a real cop, cop a few or something. Years. Yeah. 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 I think Was that still, in New Orleans maybe or something like that? Or? I, I think he yeah. was a New Orleans yeah. cop. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I just everything about this is so fucking great. silly it's on all so the levels. Awesome. Can you imagine Steven Seagal getting called in for like an <laughs> innocuous This is violation. the guy that needs to be our president. <laughs> for real. Like I mean, yeah. like really for real. he's an enigma, man. He's like he's like hanging out with Trump. He's hanging out with Putin. He's hanging out in the streets of New Orleans. <laughs> Your neighbors called in. They said the music's uh, a little bit too loud. Dude, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll turn it down. Uh, All right, fair enough. Appreciate your time. <laughs> Steven Seagal just drives away, dude. Just crushing donuts, dude. Seagal's <laughs> fat real. ass is driving away with a ponytail flopping. In the He's <laughs> like, window down in the cop car, dude. I mean, you think you'd probably just outrun him. <laughs> I mean, just a zigzag pattern away from Steven Seagal. He might shoot some up. energy from his, like, you know, I don't know. Steve, uh, he, his wind and his fuck. Delivering a Seagal death touch from meters away. I mean, yeah, tens of meters I mean, away. It, could, it will, will probably happen, but I just feel like you just turn around and run, and you're probably good. <laughs> so true. He's not going to chase you. Who's more badass, Seagal or Jean Claude Van Damme? I think Jean Claude's more badass. Who would yeah. win in a fight if they were to, like oh, head to head in their yeah. prime? You know, mano a mano, both of them in their prime. There's only one answer, and you nailed it, bro. It's a Van Damme. It's Van question. Damme. It's got to ah. be right. Yeah, doing those splits. Yeah, dude. Nobody does the splits like Van Damme. You're going for an splits, uppercut. Dude. Van Damme does the splits and fucking starts working that midsection from I just down. I feel below. like he's more of an aggressive character. Yeah, he's the ultimate aggressive character. Yeah. Talking about fucking Van Damme or no? Yeah. <laughs> There's that Absolutely. Van Damme clip where he catches wood on a uh, a fucking talk <laughs> show of some sort. Do you know what I'm what? talking about? No. This is a famous clip. We can pull it up. Right, Van Damme is on some kind of Letterman, Leno, insert late night talk show here. He's getting interviewed, catches a chub. And gets called out for it, and it's all going on. Oh. They didn't edit any of this shit to Van Damme's credit. He's like, ah, just roll with it. Just put it in there, dude. And he catches impressive wood as the interview is going on, dude. Sorry, that's super loud. Woo. I don't think this is it, but this looks awesome. This says Van Damme gets boner. <laughs> Look at Van Damme's moves, by the way, dude. Whoa. <laughs> Looking like a young Justin Timberlake out there. <laughs> oh, man, he's got that slow grind going, dude. Oh, yeah, and Van Damme's defense, there's no... Uh... Oh, he's got a huge wood right now, dude. He's covering it up. Wait, I'm laughing at that. <laughs> Is physically pointing at it, <laughs> or the uh, host, right? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and the next clip is what what Steven Seagal says about Van Damme. <laughs> we gotta watch that too. Uh, I gotta, uh, I really gotta subscribe to YouTube. <laughs> I can't see this now. Yeah, but this is a powerful message. It is important to go solar in Michigan. We've got a lot of energy waste these days. Renewable reads. Yeah. On our city <laughs> hall. Also, you clearly know Van Dam. We don't.
Did you not see wow. Bloodsport, bro? Look at his fucking greased up hair, dude. That fucking little ponytail. Seagal throwing it's composed. shade on <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I might retract my previous statement. The answer to that question might be Seagal. Dude, he looks like a, a yeah, dude, fucking he's gonna give cool death punch. Dude. Stone cold killer stone right there. Cold, Anybody man. that's that calm in that kind of situation, like, that's not a guy I want to face in hand. It's, it's the quiet bit, guys you need to look out for. Yeah. Yeah. He's for the real? silent assassin, bro. Oh, shit, man. All right, Nate. What's going on with you, man? You got more shows. You guys just got back from what? You were in Florida or something recently? Or? Yeah. So last week we uh, did some shows down south. We flew into Atlanta, Georgia. We played Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa, West Palm Beach. Um, there might have been another show in there. It was five nights. Um, so we just did a new record. Uh, yeah, I saw. I was following you recording it. Yeah, a uh, couple couple questions. I got many questions actually. Okay, okay. Uh, you were talking about the, the like you're playing some kind of vintage kit or something there, or, 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 or it was it not your kit or something? It was definitely not my kit. So we we recorded uh, with Bill Stevenson at his studio, the Blasting Room in Fort Collins, and. Uh, for those of you in the internet world that don't know who Bill Stevenson is, um, he's the drummer for The Descendants. Um, oh, well, fucking A. We were yeah. just talking about Oh, I didn't yeah. know. Okay. Yep. Um, he was the drummer for All. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was in Black Flag. Oh, um, shit. He uh, basically owns the Numero Uno uh, studio f- if you record punk rock and um, just like alternative style music i mean like his studio the blasting room is the go-to um studio to record at and my band muster plug has been um recorded with him many times uh, over the oh, years okay. okay so um but my whole thing is like when i first joined the band um in 2005 i mean muster plug's been around since 91 right um but i joined in 2005 in 2007 and 2008 we recorded a record there at the blast room with Bill and Bill told me at the time, he's like, I don't, I don't record drums anymore. I, I, I don't record drums. I'm too picky. I don't do this anymore. Um, okay. But I mean, so, so Jason, Jason Livermore, his assistant, um, did my drums and he also mixed in, uh, mastered the record. And, and, and like Jason recorded, uh, like the egg by Shiner. Oh, um, I um, love that record. Man. Yeah, I haven't heard it in a long time. But yeah, God, I love but, that but I mean, like, Jason comes from uh, a similar um, vocabulary that, that I do, like, with, with, like, Hum and all these, like, space rock uh-huh. stuff. Like, that, like, he was fairly involved with that, but also was the Descendants and All's roadie for years. Nice. And is, like, uh, Jason. Uh, did all the Rise Against stuff. Um, I mean, what, he's he's one of the best engineers ever. But anyway, so we were there when I was like younger in in the early two thousands, and and Bill Stevenson was like, I don't I don't do drums anymore. But fast forward to like this a few months ago, Bill's a different person now. Um, he he had a brain tumor and got that taken out and had a bunch of radiation done, and he's just like a He's still Bill, but he's he has a new lease on life, and so he wants to take on different projects. And so we, so between uh, this record in black and white that we did there, um, we did a record called it uh, can't contain it. We did at home and had them mix it, mm-hmm. but then this new record, um, we actually went back to the blasting room and spent two weeks there. And so Bill wanted to a produce the record, but b um, was into recording drums. So I spent 40 hours and four days tracking 17 songs of new Mustard Plug stuff. Yeah. And it was the by far the most intense musical experience of my entire life. Yeah. Hands fucking down. Like, I can't, like... Like every time I play drums now, I have Bill Stevenson on my shoulder going, "You play like a pussy. Hit harder. No, you're playing erratically. You're not doing it right. No, you're just like you, 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 no, no, no. Like I mean, it was like uh, I haven't been talked to like that. It's like that Whiplash movie, here. dude. <laughs> no, I mean, had, had he not been 
in a control room, he probably would have thrown a chair at me a couple uh-huh. times. <laughs> and like, I just, I, 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 at first I'm like, holy shit. But like, I got through that like experience and I'm like, this guy got the best drum tracks out of, out right. of me that like, I mean, he, he it's kind of good for you, especially like at, at our age. You know what I mean? Like you don't really get that kind of like push anymore. Or somebody no, like telling you. that's the thing. I mean, I I hold my drumsticks differently now. Ah. Uh, I mean, he I mean, he 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 broke me down, and rebuilt me a better person. <laughs> yeah. And like and and I will always value him for that. Um. I mean, it 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 was. I wasn't necessarily ready for it. I mean, I, I was like, right. we had a bunch like you of... you knew the song, so you weren't expecting that? <laughs> we, we had a lot of pre-production. We had yeah. really detailed demos. And like I had wrote these songs, and I went through and recorded them on MIDI on my V-drums, and then edited them all, and like really knew how I wanted my drums to sound. Mm-hmm. And then we got in there, and we rewrote the entire record. Oh, shit. Yeah. And, oh, and, that, and yeah. so... I mean, it like having the greatest like, punk rock drummer on earth, um, like, like suggest things that you, the way you play and the way that you like you do things, like and question them, like really puts a whole different perspective on that, mm-hmm. you know. And so, and and very few people I listen to anymore about like how I play and like what I feel like a good sound is. Yeah, and that's the guy I listen to. Yeah, you got to have somebody that you respect. Like how yeah. like in the mo- obviously it sounds like it helped your playing, and it sounds like you kind of to your point still have his voice in your head, yeah. kind of hearing those lessons over and over. But in the moment, not having been spoken to like that in a while, like what was your <laughs> Your kind of guttural reflex when he's breaking your balls like that. I want to throw up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was just like, what the? Because f- you love this guy. Yeah, I yeah. do, and yeah. and I've and I met him before, but like he like has been through like a lot of stuff between like I mean it was, we were there and the record came out in two thousand and eight, so I was there in two thousand and seven, two thousand and six, and so like he went through brain cancer between now and then. Like he like, right. like things are different in his world. Yeah. W- w- like and so. He has a different outlook now, and like, and and even then, when we were there, he was sick. Like, he didn't know he was sick, you know. But like, it was like something like that. It's like you don't know that what's happening to yourself, and like, it, he seemed normal enough. Um, but and I think t- things took a turn like a couple years later. Um, but now, like, he's better. And he's more in control of himself. I think that there's, there's maybe like, I think that he like the things that he thinks I think come out more um, vocally. Like yeah. I, like like I think that you he probably like, gives less of a shit. Right. You know? <laughs> like, right. And and that's a, but and, and so like, man, like he's the kindest, like caring most gentle guy but he's fucking intense yeah he also wants it to be good well he doesn't want to waste his time exactly i mean like like if 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 you check the youtube it's like like dave Grohl will say the 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 only guy that dave Grohl's intimidated of is fucking bill stevenson for the descendants oh shit yeah so it's like i mean like this guy like literally is like the, like the goat i mean he, he like, yeah. like he like as a punk rock drummer in like right. the vein that like we play in like it's like staring like the beast in the face and like i spent 40 fucking hours and four days with this guy and it was like we had to like the the goal was re- to track 17 songs yeah okay so his son who's 21 works in the studio and he's like, Hey Nate, how's it going? And I'm like, man, your dad's, uh, your dad's intense. <laughs> he's, he's like, I know. And he's, he's your homework, he's, man. He's like, he's like, you know, how many songs do you get through today? And he's, he's first like, you're doing 17 songs. Yeah. He's that's like, a lot. It's a lot of tunes. Like, Whoa. Um, and first day we got through three songs. He, I think he felt bad and kind of yelled at me a lot. He's like, how are we going to get through this? Like, I mean, I'm just like, fuck, like, what's going to happen? Oh, I'm calling my dad. I don't know why. Like, <laughs> Let's get him on. <laughs> yeah. Let's no, put him so on. Let's not do that. Um, <laughs> like, so we did three songs the first day. The second, down, the second day we did five songs. The third day we did five songs. And the last day we did, what, four songs. So mm-hmm. it's like, 
the second day, like the end of the second day, I saw Bill's son. He's like, dude, how many songs did you get through? And it's like, we got through five songs. And he's like, you're fucking kidding me. Because most, like, Bill only gets to, through two or three songs a day. Yeah. So we were fucking moving on yeah. top of that. And it was just, as a drummer, like, facing, like, the guy that you've, like, looked up to and tried to emulate like i mean or one of the guys you've you've really tried to emulate in your like approach to drumming especially in the this in, in muster plug specifically it's like when he is all of a sudden like the producer of your record and he is like recording your drums and telling you like that you can do this better it's like this is not a grammy award-winning performance <laughs> right you know i mean like and like you're playing like a pussy hit harder uh -huh. like i mean and it's like and you it wasn't always nice, you know, and it's not bad, yeah. Yeah. but like he definitely challenged me to play way better and think about the balance of my drumming way more than I've thought about it in 20 years of playing. Oh, and, 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 and I will always take that with me. Mm -hmm. And it was definitely worth the time. And like, like, so this record's coming out in September and it's like by far the best drumming that I've ever had. And I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to let people hear it. So yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So like, like that, like straight up, like, you know, it sounds awesome and, um, I can't wait. People, I can't for, wait for people to hear it. So. so when you did the record with them before, mm -hmm. uh, have you ever considered that your shitty playing gave him a brain tumor? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't record the drums then. So, oh, so it, no, it. no. Um, he's like, I did a mustard blood record. <laughs> Immediately had to go in and get brain surgery uh, afterward. Well, well, maybe, but, but the whole thing is he, like evildoers beware the, uh, one of the seminal mustard plug records back in the nineties. Like that was the second record that Bill had ever recorded oh, at his cool. studio. So, I mean, it was like we have a long yeah. history from the early 90s yeah, yeah. from going there. And that and that studio's only gotten better. Oh, I'm sure. Like, they've been, yeah. like the people there have been nominated for Grammys. I oh, mean, yeah. It, it's a different. I'm sure that's a lot of what he's doing now because, I mean, it's it's funny because I was talking about, like, oh, I saw them at Warped Tour. I had no idea that that's who you were recording with. Or anything. Yeah. I was just talking about because I know they're a great band that, you know, from, you know, back in the day and everything. So that's fucking badass. That Serious question, though. Like, how did you see like a personality change in him from one session to the next? In other words, like, is he just that intense and that direct by nature? Because when you get like in, into the brain, you so, know, issue, like, could that have been playing a part in like accentuating things and making them different, especially since he didn't know. Right. So it wasn't a function of like, well, I think, I think he's, he's always been a really direct, like, um, he, he he fights for his ideas, you know, and he's very passionate about it. And and he's a, he's a musical genius. Like he's not only like the like arguably the best punk rock drummer on earth, but like he's got perfect pitch. He writes songs. He sings. He's got he, like his sense of melody and orchestration is like beyond the scope of like what my head can do. Uh, All right, I mean, yeah. like, there's there's a reason why he is the call guy for so many people for like engineering or drumming i mean like the, the, like uh like they call him a savant like there's yeah. like that's like his his one of his best friends his brain surgeon like you know like he was like, talking about how like they call him a savant now and that pisses him off but like he's at a level that most people don't operate at sure and you can't explain it but like he like it it's it's you know that you're working with a, a level of of greatness and but he's he's humble about it but he's also like he grew up in i mean black flag started in like the early 80s you know so like 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 growing up through punk rock he's it's like i like he'll say like if it like if he was living today he'd be canceled you know what i mean like yeah. i mean like i mean like there's a different like there's a different level like the old all the old school punk dudes have to keep really fucking quiet now because like the like, punk rock is so pc now yeah. right and like it came from a place that was really not pc and, and, and it has some darkness and it's finally cleaning itself up in so many ways which is great for everyone but um you know like the stories of like the you know mid 80s and 90s like it wasn't it wasn't pretty and so like you, you it's not like 
a lot of people would have been canceled long ago for a lot of the shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. I guess that's my point. Um, but now it's like he's just trying to do the like he's in the descendants he like, he also is in flag which is like yeah. like like the like the yeah. real black flag with yeah. all the real fucking players in the in, in yeah. that whole group it's just like that's he, crazy they do so much man but he's also a great parent like yeah. i just like i mean his 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 son miles is a super gifted guitar player and like like i it's like it's really amazing just to have spent time there uh, after it we hadn't been there in a long time and it like it's 2023 now it was like the last time we were there was 2006 2007 yeah, so it's like time. i mean it's it's a different studio now um i was really trying to catch like uh, i was really looking at like what the kit actually so, was okay, and so the mics ba- and yeah. stuff you know like, so so back to the drums so so i played on that kit I, I didn't have a lot of say. Like, they set a kit up for me. That's what it kind of seemed I, like. I, I gave him yeah. my specs, and then there was a wall of cymbals, a wall of snare drums, yeah. um, a wall of toms for me to kind of fuck with. So um, the kit that we chose was, like, this, like, 60s Ludwig. That's what it looked like. It was some kind of, like, yeah, yeah, vintage, some kind of crazy vintage kit that he's probably recorded 100 times. And, you yeah, know. And, that, and, that, and that's totally what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... We had a, a barrage of different cymbals, a couple of different snare drums. There was this company called Sweet, which is a drum company that I wasn't familiar with, but they had this like straight up full um, mahogany drum, and it just sounded fucking killer. Like a snare drum? Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! It's like the best sounding snare ever. Like, nice. I mean, I'm 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 like a Black Beauty guy. Like, I like, like yeah, I like yeah. I like brass snares, yeah, right? Me too. Yeah. But like this, like this thing caught like better than everything else. Yeah. So like we rolled with it. Um, and it, so like there's gonna be I think 13 songs on the record. So you did like 17 with the intention, like yeah, we'll probably cut a few or yeah, put out as bonus yeah, tracks or yeah. whatever. So we have, yeah. I think there's gonna be 13 on the record. We're gonna save two for different singles after the fact. Cool. And then we have two more that the drums are at least done for. Yeah. And then later on, we can ship tracks to them, and they can kind of we can combine songs later on. But we just yeah we ha- we wrote so much stuff. Yeah. During well, the it's pandemic. been a while too, right? It was a little, well, your last record was five years ago or something Seven, like i think it, okay so so i mean it's it's been too yeah. long really so yeah. it was time i mean, yeah and we didn't know if there's gonna be a new record or not or what we were gonna do yeah um but then like once 2020 hit and the world stopped we had just been in japan and australia yeah and mexico city recently and stuff in too. september like, yeah, yeah we, i'm we, following it and dude, i'm just like jesus christ over. i know it's it's awesome man i'm it's, grateful and yeah. happy that people from Places that I never thought I would be yeah. to play in, like asking us like and bringing us down. It's so it's so cool. It's um, legit crazy. Like it's fucking awesome. Like oh, I mean, like we we went down to play with this band Los de Baja from Mexico in September, and we played a soccer field outdoors for like on a f- Saturday night. There was like thirteen thousand people yeah, there. Yeah, soccer, soccer field's a huge thing. Yeah, but but that but that was just like one of two shows we played. So yeah. then, so then we they were like this band was playing a bigger festival on the outskirts of Mexico City. Um, it was a thing called ska tex. We didn't realize that ska music in Mexico City is one of the biggest genres of music. It's wild, right? And like <laughs> we like apparent apparently people really know us down there to yeah. a certain degree, and so. We like so, so this band brought us down and played their show, but then on Sunday we played this thing called Ska Tex, <laughs> and there was 40,000 people Damn, there geez, on dude. a Sunday, nice, bro. So, like, we like so this band played and then they brought us out during their set to play songs during their set, okay, which is a weird kind of setup, but yeah, okay. So, so they went on stage after midnight on a sunday so it's monday morning yeah all right on like north mexico city in like the farmland there's the it was the biggest crowd i've ever played it was like oh, for sure. it yeah, was like going dude. to Lollapalooza, yeah, man, like in mexico it, it was just like, wh- like yeah. what i've been in crowds that big but certainly never played for any crowd I that just, big it dude. just it, i just it, 
it, it's yeah. cool that like and the, the latin american crowds are crazy dude they're crazy man they, they love it they're they, wild they, they do and yep. so like we're trying to we're starting to find that out and like we're tr- like later in this band's career i mean the band's around since 91 yeah. so it's like it's weird that, like we're trying to we're finally taking up people on their offers to bring us different places and like i I'm like blown away like the legacy that band has like yeah. in, like internationally like and yeah. so like I'm like yeah. happy and grateful that like I'm a part of that um and like it's just fun you know it's it's not yeah. like most of not super serious exactly like, I mean, that's we one do, of the funnest parts about I it I mean there, sure. I mean there are some serious songs and like there's yeah. some political minded stuff but like at the end of the day dude yeah. it's like it's upbeat happy I mean, the band's it, called Mustard Plug. It's dude. Like, I mean, right, yeah. like you know, let's like, right. I'd say yeah. it's 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 it definitely is not. I mean, that's the thing it. of an era. I mean, that's what a lot of ska was and so and punk rock in general or yeah. whatever. I mean, mm-hmm. like even just just in general, the alternative rock you could say in a bigger picture is you know there was a lot of fun stuff back in the day. I guess you could say when they started, it wasn't all fucking. A lot of, so much just doom and gloom now. It's either doom and gloom or it's all just like about fucking. It's one of the two. <laughs> well, it kind of makes a lot of sense in Mexico. Like the more I'm thinking about it, this like with the horns and sort of the traditional yeah, like mariachi yeah, yeah. stuff. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, Scott comes from Jamaica, but, yeah, like, reggae, but, yeah, but all yeah. the updates. I mean, all yeah, the, the updates. updates it's, stuff, it's, yep. I mean, it translates to, to the traditional Mexican stuff. Yeah, and uh, so it's it's we're, i mean the band like weirdly like still does a lot of cool stuff like we're doing like the no effects like last tour coming i just up saw i was gonna Ohio. mention it i just saw you posted it and i was like fuck it was less than jake it was suicide machine descendants like bouncing souls yeah. like i mean like all the bands like i grew up listening to yeah, it's like I, I mean it's weird as fuck to play with these bands yeah like, like as an adult and as as a fan of these bands like I mean, it was weird because like I was a fan of Mustard Plug before I joined the band. Like right. they were they were one of my favorite bands in high school. And then, like when I was twenty five, I got a weird phone call. Like, would you maybe want to join that band? And so was, uh, that's what I wanted to ask you. Did was it Rick that brought you in? Like, how did that work? Uh, yeah, you know, like, like so, so Rick Johnson. Um, was, well, I always think of as Rick Trucks. Rick, yeah. We, <laughs> who, as a quick aside, I went and recorded a demo at his studio. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, I was a while back when I was trying to do some Holloway shit, but we mm-hmm. got to hang out for a while and stuff. So yeah, it's cool. He's he's a great dude. Yeah. Um, and so he had joined the band in like two thousand and and four, two thousand and three, somewhere around there, and. Um, they had a, a this guy John, who's like a, a great friend of mine, was playing drums for them at the time, and he and he joined the same time Rick did, and he only played with the band about a year. Um, his other band was going on, like was missing tours with uh, Hot Water Music and and whatever, and so like he just he never like it never worked out with him wanting to be in Mustard full time, and so like there's a transition period where like. Like he was the interim drummer, and so they needed a guy, and so Rick called me up one day, and said, "Hey, would you maybe want to be the drummer mustard plug?" And I'm like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" <laughs> He's like, "You had audition, you know? Like we have a few people that like you know we're thinking of, and it was a short list, and so I learned you know a dozen songs, and I went and practiced nice. with them, yeah. and I got the gig, and it was just the weirdest thing because it was just like, I." I, 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 they, they, it was one of the first few bands that I went to as a kid. So it was like, it was a really kind of a, I wasn't sure how to handle it. And I still don't t- today, you know, a bunch of years later, but. But you've been, it's crazy because you, you, do you still feel like you're the new guy, but you've been in it for <laughs> the, over half of the career of the band or something? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm the longest <laughs> drummer in the band's history. Right. Um, at this point, I joined in 2005, so it's like, tw- I mean, it's like almost like 18 years yeah. now. It's, it's yeah. a long time. And Rick, like, left the band last year. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, uh, I saw that he's not with them anymore, which was a little surprising to me. But, I mean, so what? I think that he really was tired of playing shows. Um He's always had other interests since I remember talking to him right. about like his, he was doing some solo shit back then and stuff and well, whatever. Well, and so it's not so much his, he's not so much into performing these days. He's more doing live sound. So he, oh, cool. so he's doing live sound for uh, Jeff Rosenstock, 
who's, who's rather huge right now. Um, he's doing live sound for Streetlight Manifesto and tour managing them. He's doing tour managing for Andrew Jackson J- Jihad, AJJ. So he's always on tour. And so, and some of these tours, like he was passing up for the mustard plug. And like some of these tours, like, were really lucrative and so yeah. he was making two to three times as much money sure, as, as sure. he would be on the road yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. like like all right a ska band there's six seven of us yeah you know yeah, yeah. so it's a there's it's a not big split it, it's a big split yeah, yep and so and on top of it like we're in vans it's you're not sleeping much i mean he's doing bus tours mm. you know i mean it's it's a different gig and you know, some people don't want to be on the road like that. Yeah, I mean, anymore. you know, nobody's getting any younger. No, it gets uh, harder. Yeah, like, I, yeah. So, I mean, he's always going to be like our bass player emeritus. Yeah. Um, but this guy Greg, we call him Gregadeth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he was kind of always Mustard Plug's fill-in basses for the past six or eight years, while Rick did all the like, he would. Rick would often like, like go not do tours to take other other gigs and right. whatnot and so i'm because he's got he's, he's got his own studio yeah he's the head sound guy at the pyramid scheme like he's the guy is fucking busy and oh, he's he, doing sound over at the pyramid scheme yeah he, he, oh, i don't like, think i've ever seen him there. Like, like <laughs> well he's always on tour but he's oh. he but he's the head engineer there oh uh, okay i mean he basically built that pa system is he still got his same studio is it still the same spot on Cold cherry War? street yeah yeah, yep. yeah. Fun spot, man. Yep. Super cool stuff. And that used to be like the old Mustard Plug band house in front of it. And yeah. that's and that's where the band used to live and practice. And Yeah. I think um, when I was there, some a bunch of your gear was there. You might have even had a kit set up in there most in, the, likely. in the live room, you know. Uh he's I got mad respect for him as a bass player, though. He's oh he's goodness. incredible. I always remember way, way back in the day, whatever his it was his ska band. Was it help me out? It's the the whack trucks? Which which were no. skeptics? Yes. Which was yes. I mean, he was kind of yes. the band, but it wasn't his band. Okay, but, okay well, whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there was, you know, there was a whack trucks, but I remember he was, was in the ska. other ska band or whatever. Yeah. And I mean, it was, the mustard plug was really, I mean, like, he's just the fit for that. Could, it's just, you could see the trajectory of getting into the biggest Rick, ska Rick band. Rick definitely, the, like, it, it made a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, he's a great fucking bassist and a, and a great guy. So it, it does kind of suck that hopefully he's going to perform again and, you know, or whatever, just cause he's shout out to Rick. Cause he's a fucking great fucking player. You know, like, so. <laughs> one of my best friends in this, t- in, in this for, entire for sure, life. For sure, yeah. And like, I mean, like is like the guy that like always wants to help. And really like, if you have a problem, like, like you always call Rick because he's like, he'll tell you. And annoyingly so, he's like, I'm right like 98% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and But the problem is, is like, as much as that pisses you off, he is. Indeed. You know, Indeed. so like, I mean, like, you yeah. can, you, you, like, you can be pissed off about his, like, you know, what he has to say, mm-hmm. you know, but like, he normally, like, there's a good damn chance yeah. that he, like, he's a straight shooter, man. I yeah, mean, like, so yeah. like, I mean, like, like Rick is great and like, like, it's, it's, like he's he's always like gonna be like one of my top yeah like, like handful of friends of this life for sure for sure yeah my brother's like that too he's like constantly fucking right about everything it's frustrating <laughs> it's annoying <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sure so when's the new record supposed to come out there and you're thinking it's gonna hit around september or something like that probably so i think like the the plan right now is september 1st labor day weekend friday september 1st it's going to come out all right um it's all getting, tracked it's everything's tracked, done it's mixed it hasn't been mastered oh, yet okay um but we have a like an album title um we have a track listing you get a debut it here uh i i don't think i, don't think I can <laughs> no, I'm um, kidding, I'm kidding, there's a label that's putting out and all that stuff is not um, They'd be I, pissed because the millions of people that are listening to this. Yeah, right now, I mean, <laughs> spoiled, uh, I mean I'm not sure when this com- is going to come out, but like, <laughs> it's going to come out in September, yeah, right when the record drops. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, but it sounds great, and if you guys want to hear it afterwards, I'll like play you some songs if you want to hear a bunch of ska. But yeah, for I sure, mean, it, like I'll keep the mics on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like we like we just got hit up by like Universal Studios to do a. Uh, um, uh, to be on a soundtrack for a Nicolas Cage film. Oh, that's hell supposed, yeah, that's dude. supposed That's supposed to come out in the next few weeks, which I think is going to happen. Damn, if only it was a Steven Seagal movie. I <laughs> know, <laughs> I know. Um, I mean, like, I mean, it's, the bands, like, both bands are busy, like. Yeah. Um, 
And you got gigs. He's had a couple coming up, but one at Bell's. Yeah, Bell's, up. Papa Pete's. Um, yeah. The plug's got the no effects thing. Yeah. We're doing a big festival, big festival. Up in, in Canada this summer. Hell yeah. Um, the fall hits, and then we go on tour with the effect release. So, like, we're doing East Coast, the West Coast. Um, we're, we'll be down South um, for some festivals. So, like, it's it was strange. Like, this past year has been a... Uh, uh, an interesting point in time in, in my world, because I mean, when the pandemic hit, it was like, I was on tour. Um, I was bartending constantly. I was like, I felt like I was so busy. And then like the world stopped. Yeah. And like my and tour- those two things, the two things you do bartending yeah. and touring are like the two, like, Big, no, you're done. done. Not a huge market Dude, for either of those. I, 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 I was fishing for a year. I went fishing <laughs> right. every yeah. fucking day for a year, which is great. Cause I'm like, if you want to go steal that fish and I'm your guy, let's do that. Um, but like I didn't know what to do, and I'm like I started to think. I'm like, if I can't do this anymore, if if the world's poison and I can't go on tour, I can't like yeah, work in this, what are like, you gonna do? So mm-hmm. I became a fucking realtor, and uh, I saw yeah, I saw that yeah. Yeah, so yeah. like so like now like I'm like now the world's back open, and I'm like tours are happening. I'm bartending a few nights a week on my own terms, um, and I'm helping friends and family buy and sell like property. Yeah, and it's it's a cool gig, and it's like. I have time during the day. I can't always play drums, you know? Yeah. And so yeah. like I have it, like that's like my day job It's like, I help people buy and sell houses and property and stuff yeah. like that. And it's like, it's, it's been a f- interesting, um, I haven't had like a, an adult job in 20 years. Yeah. Well, you know? good for you. That's living the dream, dude. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, so I'm trying to grow up a little bit and eh, it's over. Fuck that. <laughs> well, yeah, but like, it's, it's, it's interesting to like apply, like, you know, your drive and passions to different areas of your life. Yeah. And so like it, I've been touring in bands for a long time, like since, since 2000 really like 1999. And so it's like, it's nice to like know that like, like I can do other things in this life. Like if, like if I can't play music, right, right, right. It's good to have like, that you're a capable person and you can do this. Well, I mean, it's great to live your life in the clouds forever and ever, you know? Um, and, and know that you follow the dream, but then the day it's like if it all is taken away, dude. And in this day and age, you have to have a side gig yeah. or a backup plan. I'm also a booking agent for a venue in Kalamazoo, right. so it's like I mean, like you have to do a lot of things if you want to live an artful life. Yeah. Plan B is never a bad thing to have, dude. You know, you need C backup and D. Yeah, yeah, e. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. like if if you really want to do the things you love today in this world, you can't fucking wait for anyone else to do them for you, and you got to hustle. Yeah. You, you have to do all the things yeah. because if not, you won't have time or money to do anything you want to do. So, like, dude, like, like, say yes to fucking every project. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, because you don't know. I mean, yeah, you can, you can fail, but like, that's okay. Because like, we're all gonna fucking die. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, like, <laughs> at least you have a story about it, and it's like, I. No matter yeah. what happens, you'll always have the tale of being on this podcast. This yeah. Year. Well, yeah, but like, I mean, but the, but that's the fun of it. That's the excitement of like, you know, like talk like. I don't know, like rekindling and just talking about like yeah, the man. old days. Yeah. But yeah. also like like we're all up to different stuff now. We're all fucking like Yeah. Like look at this awesome house you're in, dude. Yeah, like yeah. I mean it's just like it's great to see like where we're at now. Yeah, so like it's, yeah. it's it's cool that like I don't know. Well you're, as long as I've known you, you've always been uh, you know, a premier drummer. Everybody's always been, you know, like <sighs> you know, Nate Cohen's always been the fucking uh, a drummer who who's good. Yeah, you know, I became aware of you. Do you remember? This is the first time I became aware of you. Was <laughs> all the high school bands, meaning like high school band, yep. went and saw this percussionist at a church. Oh, the guy and from Israel. He it was he was his name was like Yen Zimbalista or something. Yes, shit. and yes. he asked somebody to come up, and everybody from your school was like, "Nay, you got to go up there or whatever." Yeah. And you went up and you played like a snare drum with this guy. I did. You remember this? I did. I just <laughs> going through my dad's yeah. store. I just threw away this program last week. See? I literally yeah. threw away the program for this performance. Yeah, we were there. You might have been there too. Did you go to that? Thing? It was at a church, and it was these professional. Per- Cushionists from Israel from Israel and they did like a whole show they did like it was like the first thing was like an educational thing and then they did a concert 
<laughs> afterward or whatever. But you went up and actually fucking like played with this guy or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That you was, remember that shit? I do remember that. Pulling yeah. that shit out of the fucking woodwork, bro. Oh, dude. <laughs> um, well, it's like, so I, I always wanted to play at drum set. I always wanted to play in rock and roll bands. Yeah. But for my parents to let that fly. They're like, you're going to play in the school band. Yeah. And you're going to take lessons. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, okay, fine. Cause I, I, mean, I thought like it'd make me better. And like, and it did. And so like my parents were very adamant if I was going to play this devil's music of rock and roll, like, cause like it was a problem because I was so obsessed with, I got really into heavy metal yeah. as a kid. Like I wore a Megadeth t-shirt. I wore a ministry yeah. t-shirt. I came after like it, this ruined my parents' like vision of me as a kid. Like, like there, mega death t shirt, dude. Like there, there are pictures of me at the at at, at Walt Disney World. Yeah, you know, yeah. walking through the Magic Kingdom, and I have the like, I'm like just like the saddest, most depressed goth kid. Like I have these, <laughs> these weird short shirts, but then I have like this mega death shirt on. Like, yeah. like, but I'm like, dude, I'm like, I'm like nine years old. Like, I mean, it's just, it's the weirdest thing. And my Mustaine's parents. Mustaine's flaming red mane on the t-shirt. My mom left me at a mall in in Orlando because I bought an Alice in Chains t-shirt. Oh, she was shit. so mad. Man, so, I had like, all that shit. We used to go to Hot Topic and my, pick like, up. It did, like, it did not fly with my family and so like it was like like so they really really wanted me to be in the school band and so yeah. like for me to play drums i had to be the jazz band yeah and so, so all this stuff made me like well-rounded but and, you like, and you also played snare drum and marching band yeah, which is, i still i tell people constantly and our band wasn't as advanced as your band was and, sure but i Constant. I had good teachers though, still, and I always say people on the drum set. They're like, well, "How do you, you know?" Like, "Oh, it's impressive stuff or whatever." Like, I'm pretty decent at drums, and there, and I'm like, so much of what I'm doing is just marching stuff that I'm just doing on different toms. It's it's all snare drum. You know, it's what you learn in marching snare drum. It breaks it all just, down fundamentally. I just do it on toms, and it makes it sound <laughs> way more impressive. Wow! <laughs> Not, <laughs> like people don't understand how fucking difficult snare drum is. Like how crazy different because yeah. it's just one drum. So you know, but like, holy shit, man! These, when you I move mean, it around a little bit. Advanced players on on snare drum, you know, like top tier fucking drum core guys and mm. whatever. You know, like. It's preposterously difficult how difficult that shit is. And I'm doing a basic level of that, but just moving it onto Tom's and it makes it sound really impressive. Right. <laughs> I mean, it, and that's to be the drum set. I mean, it's, I mean, you, you can just have one drum, but you, but you open it up and it's like, Oh my God, it opens up a whole new world of sounds. And like, yeah, and yeah. that, and that sound has an effect on people in some crazy yeah, ways. Yeah. I mean, like we were in Chicago, um, uh, in the fall and they're like, you're the drummer mustard plug. Like we're walking on stage. Boop. Like, I don't want to see like, It's just like, like, like somehow my drums made, made, made that person do that. And it's just like, really? That's fucking like silly and like wrong and sad in a lot of ways. But like, it, it moves people, you know, in yeah. like in different yeah. ways that they would normally not think of. That's the yeah. goal of this pod is to just get flashed one time, be recognized. <laughs> It's You're just, the guys from yeah. Danger, though. Boom, spill it's, it's just, I mean, it, and, and that is just, like, silly and dumb. And, like, I'm like, like really? Like, why would you do that to me? You know? It's just like, this is the it's most... Like, un- we're in a ska band. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me watch why I, I underwhelm you. <laughs> well, I've always thought your playing was... It's funny you're talking about when you, you, you're uh, recording the new record and the guy's telling you to hit harder. Like, I've never really thought of you as, like, a hard hitter, but I've always thought of you as a very controlled... Per, like controlled and precise player, you know, and that's a good, in, in, I mean, in a good way, you know, right, like right, you're right. a controlled player. So like, is he just like, you need to fucking hit it harder. But it's because I always talk about in drumming, there's this thing called quality of stroke where that you can hit a drum. There's, there's guys that know how to hit a drum correctly. You could say or something that can mm-hmm. get a huge tone out of it. And it's, but you're not like it's not like a full arm thing. There's there, 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 there's a crack to make that snare drum resonate. Yeah, that yeah. like like that. And it's like I it's, thought I had, but like like for me in this situation, it was like I I play like with the stick of like the fulcrum. Like 
like I like this is the end of the stick, okay? Like and at home like, you doesn't matter, you don't even care. Um but like like I choke up like with, with, with my thumb on the fulcrum like hat like I don't know, like halfway up like you know like this. And like I sat down with Bill and he's like you're holding your sticks too high. You you totally like, he, like, yeah. like he's like, yeah. like you, you need to bring him back. Right. So like he, he wants he, that weight the, the, the uh-huh. weight of the stick on that to hit that snare right. so that that snare drum resonates. Yeah. And because that is the perfect tone right. for what that drum should sound like. And so like like I really had to focus on making that quality sound like like I really pushed back on the way the, on mm-hmm. where I hold the sticks for this recording, but it, it's also changed like how I play my sticks at shows now. And like I've got fucking Bill on my shoulder, being you're playing like a pussy. Like you need to play. It's like don't play too loud, don't play too soft. He, he calls it super medium. Oh, okay. Play super medium. I like that's, that. That's just don't like just yeah. and make it the same every time. But it's yeah. crazy because like, once I changed yeah. the way like I held my left stick, like. You know, like the dudes that play that have like that same like dot in their snare drum where mm-hmm. it's just the same. Like yeah. it's, it's just like it's a dent and the coating's worn off. Yeah, but just from this this uh, one it's like a dime. Yeah, size. it's like yeah. how do you do that? Uh-huh. I figured out how to do it. Uh-huh. Like that's the thing. It's like I mean, you you really you you hold back and like it's you hold the yeah. fucking six on the like and like that's how I that's how I. But it's like neither one's right or wrong technically necessarily like and so I, and i and i've always thought like it's it's a balance of the two but like it's just for the quality sound and for that recording session it really like having bill yell at me for yeah, 40 hours yeah. in four days it's like this is the way i play now right and, and the, to me like that there's very few people that will listen to that kind of um my girlfriend calls it constructive feedback yeah, yeah <laughs> you know yeah. i mean it's just like you're doing it but like it's you can do it better if you do it this way right and if you have the time and the effort and the want like it's just like it's great to like this at least to me like everything is about learning and, and how to become yeah. a better yeah person a better musician yeah. or whatever and like like and especially at our age you just being open-minded still to like hey there's people that are way better than me and like dude like if if i know this guy's way better than me like i want to fucking hear what he has to say for sure you know i mean like, we don't like when we get this age to this age you you don't have many more massive learning experiences like that yeah, and so yeah. like it to me it was really worthwhile and like I, I'm happy and grateful that he's still here and he still has the want to work with Mustard Plug. Yeah. I mean, we paid him a ton of money, but like, like, like Bill should be teaching lessons and should be so he's not respected the, the way that like he should be because right. like he should be like teaching master classes on, right, on right. how drummers should approach recording yeah, and how they yeah. should hit the drums. Cause like he really, transformed the musical landscape of of punk rock and alternative rock i mean he he like he like he was in fucking black flag man yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he he recorded all of those records like all the important records that band did he fuck like i just like so i'm, I'm, I'm still high on that experience yeah for sure I am, hell dude. yeah man good and like i, I Listen to the I've, I've, like, I've never even heard of the guy. I'm pretty up on record producers, but I'm not super in the punk rock world, you could say. But and then so and that's like, and that's fair. Um, <laughs> so, I'm like, I gotta look this fucking guy up. <laughs> so so the the Descendants documentary called Filmage is is the the documentary on him and um the band and it's partly his studio. Um and it goes through like the mid 2000s when he went through um his brain cancer and the treatment for it and then him coming back throughout of it and it's such a tear jerking uh documentary that's so well done that that talks about the history of um punk rock in that time period and the dawn of punk rock like in america um and it's 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 a worthwhile documentary to check out. Yeah, it's for sure. Filmage, oh, well. um, and 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 there's another documentary coming out on the Blasting Room itself, and just the story about that. But if you, you where is it it's geographically? In, it's in Fort Collins, Colorado. 
Okay. Which is maybe about an hour outside of Denver. Right. Um, but if you discog the, uh, the studio and you and you read the list of the bands that they've and the records they put out, it's it it will freak you out. Yeah. It, it really will. Hell yeah. That so, sounds about it. Yeah, I got definitely got to check this guy out. Um, <coughs> another one of the questions I had to ask you is, do you still have the AOT kit? The fucking I, I like, do. gold. Yes. With the wood rims that you bought I, at RIT, I think it was, where I, you got it maybe? I, or? Yeah, it wasn't RIT, but it, it was um, Firehouse. Um, oh, okay. But I just found the receipt for it. No, <laughs> yeah. see, there you go. Going yeah. through the old shit. Um, yeah. I remember when you got it, oh like, God. you know, bringing it in. Um, I remember me having a lot of problems playing on it because the wood rims are higher than a, yeah, than it's a my metal fuck. rim. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but I always remember that kit sounded fucking good, and the fucking kick drum always sounded fucking good, you know? Sounded, it still sounds killer. I bet. Um, one thing that with that kit that happened was um, the hardware on it, um, on the inside, um, there's these plastic uh, screws yeah. um, that held the, um, the metal hardware in, and they, over the years, uh, got warped and and so like i've basically had to take every single plastic lug off the inside of the hardware and replace it with aluminum now weird and, and so i've got like a like the like the, the snare drum lug alone it's like 20 lugs right yeah yeah but there's like two of these plastic things on each lug. So there's, there's like 40 of them on, on like each drugs uh, on each, on each lug. So it's, it's such a process to change all the <laughs> hardware yeah. and each drum. So I'm slowly going through that. Um, so I just got the snare drum up and running uh, about three or four months ago. Like the kit sounds fucking killer. Yeah. It's just like, it needs, it needs a little like, needs that TLC. It needs dude, that. Yeah. It, I, like I can't tour with it anymore. Like I, for, yeah. for, for, for like, for the first few years of mustard plug, I would take it on the road with me because it just sounded so good. Mm -hmm. But like a floor tom got dropped in Wisconsin. Yeah, it's not a it's that's not a toy kit. <laughs> that kit is like well, a, it was a real piece of dude. I mean, know? it's like maple. Like yeah, that's, it's, an, it's an expensive. Those AOT kits are. Yeah, I mean, it was late nineties Ray AOT kit. Yeah. Um, like so, so the floor tom got dropped. It broke the the hoop to the the drum. It took him six months to to manufacture a new hoop yeah. and like 400 bucks. I'm like, yeah. I can't bring this on the road well, anymore. Well, 400 bucks isn't even, I thought, honestly, I thought it would have been more for a new hoop for your shit. Yeah. Even, I mean, even that, like. I mean, it was just like, but it, it's just like. It, yeah. You, yeah. You that's can't not take a down touring the road. kit anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, Especially when like, I mean, like, yeah, it sounds great, but like, you know, when you're micing everything up, like, a kit's going to be a kit. Like, you're going to be fine. Does you know? it matter? <laughs> like, that's, that's what I'm saying. You know, like, like, I, I, <laughs> I play a Yamaha stage custom. Is that what you're playing now? Like, I thought Mustard I saw, Plug. were you playing, uh, I see these indie drums everywhere. You got one of those indie kits? So, so let me tell you about the indie kits. Um, so, in Bonehawk, uh, the singer Matt, um, his best high school friend, or one of them, and original drummers in his other band that I also play with nobody's favorite is the guy that started indie drums. Oh, okay. And so, so um, they, it's local ish. So it's, so it's based on Kalamazoo. That's probably why I feel like I'm seeing them maybe, or maybe they're doing well and that's great. But like, well, I both. See so, so this guy, Josh Allen, um, was, I need to get one. Yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah. And we should, go to, we should go to the Kalamazoo and, and hang out at, at the place. We should. They bought an old bank and that's where the studio is or, or, yeah. or the drums, the drum shops in an old, like F like, like FMB. Okay. Bank. I got to know this person. Yeah. 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 He's, he's the nicest guy. Um, so he gave us a kit. So hell yeah. And so that's, so I play on that. Um, I definitely got to know this person. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't give out kits very often. No, I'm it's a prototype kit. Um, <laughs> But so, um, his name's Josh Allen, Indy Drums, Kalamazoo, and like, so, like, he's really good friends with Bonehawk, and so that, and that's, and that's how, um, we, we that's why I play that kit in that Okay, band. so you're playing that in, in Bonehawk, and then yep. you're doing a Yamaha in... Well, and, and just because of Yamaha, so like, dude, like... I like a Yamaha kit, man. I like a Yamaha about anything. It's honestly, the SM58 of drums. Yeah, for real. It it's, takes a beating. Uh -huh. It always sounds the same. Still the most recorded kit in history is the Yamaha studio customer, stage customer, or whatever, you know, like. 
and like, like at least I'm more into cymbals than I am to drums because like, like you said like when you when you show up at, at a gig yeah or a studio like it, yeah you want the the fundamental tone of the drums but then like you're thrown to the house you're gonna change it yeah so yeah. it's like it, it's when they're mic'd up and you got a full band and you're playing at a big room or whatever like okay you want your drums to sound great don't get me wrong but at the same time it's like there's a there, it's the same thing with guitars and i've gone through this where like there's a threshold of like do i need to bring the three thousand dollar les paul you know i ended up buying a fucking chibson out of china and putting different pickups in it and shit because you know it makes like, sense it's you know the tonal difference is minuscule like in the studio okay but like all right you know am i gonna risk theft or breaking or something this fucking three thousand dollar real gibson or am i gonna risk a some fucking seven hundred dollar guitar you know like it's that's a big difference i bought this drum kit out of out of the back of some guy's truck for 400 bucks yeah you know yeah. i mean i mean the, sometimes the, cheap drums sound great too like, the ai at 98 like, was four thousand dollars yeah you know it yeah. just doesn't make any sense exactly it's stupid uh -huh. um so like uh, like like buy indie drums like so i play an indie snare drum even even with mustard plug with, with the ai stage custom or with with the Yamaha stage custom i just like i i i think it's really important to support like local musicians and local drum manufacturers and like josh allen is making like he was the the he was at ludwig for years like he is doing oh man so, so that's the thing is like i had no idea this was local yeah, yeah so like, so he, he yeah. quit ludwig to do his own drum company yeah and it was based out of ann arbor for a while but now he's moved back to, to western ish michigan and he's in yeah. Kalamazoo. so it's like i mean like that's the guy I go to yeah. for when, when I need drums. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I got to talk to this guy. Hey, Kalamazoo's got quite the history of musical instruments, you know? So, mm. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, that's badass. How many kits you got now, total? Six, seven. Ooh, shit. Yeah. Damn, son. Yeah. What I've, else you got? Um, I've got some... Old you want to buy my drum workshop? No, I don't. Have, <laughs> dude, that's the thing. It's like I need a bigger spot. You tell me. Yeah, yeah. I've got Rogers. I've got a Gretsch. Oh, I've got I want my, a Rogers. Yeah, oh. I've got my AI. I got my Yamaha. I've got my Rowan V drums. Yeah. Um, I've got. It's a nice collection. That's a lot of good. I've got a bunch of rando, you know, yeah, shells and stuff. Sure. Um, and I've got a ton of. I've got like I don't know a dozen snare drums. Like I just like right, I right. mean, and then like so many simple. Like I just I. I love gear and I, I love vintage symbols. That's, yeah. that's, that's my one passion. Like I, like if I love old symbols and that's really, okay. That's the, that's the death of me. So. Zildjian's. Oh, what? what yeah. Zildjian, Sabians and pasties. Anything yeah. from like, you know, the sixties through the nineties. I have a really great, I think it's a 68. The guy, I'm, no, I've forgotten. The guy told me what year it actually was. Zildjian ride. Okay. I think it's like a 68 or something oh. like that. It's it's they pretty They don't make fucking, them like that anymore. It's pretty great. It's uh I bought it for uh doing just like rock cuz it's very fucking like crashy, you know? Like I typically my my typical thing is like more of a ping ride, like prog rocky, pingy yeah. ride kind of thing. This was specifically I got it for just like this is a big dumb drum kit you know, huge sizes, raw. I'm just going to smash on you it. You crash on the ride. Dude, that fucking symbol just sounds fucking phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It was so fucking, I, there's part of me that doesn't want to clean it, you know, but it was so filthy. I had to fucking clean it up a little bit, but that's a great symbol, man. That's fucking really, it's really good stuff. I mean, I, I scour Craigslist and marketplace every day for, yeah. for, for deals on used symbols. And, yeah. and, and you sometimes you get some great finds, man. Mm -hmm. I got this pasty ride like on the east side for like I don't know, 110 bucks, and, and it's just pasty like, shit too, man. It's you expensive. Get man. The fuck out of here, man. <laughs> it's crazy, dude. You know, I don't even like have any. I wish I had more. Like especially for again, like in the you might say prog kind of stuff or whatever. It's so yep. splashy and you know like mm -hmm. these gorgeous tones and stuff. You know, like it's it's just a little different. Like the pasty stuff. <sighs> I wish I had more of it. Let me say, I'm kind of have settled on being a Zildjian man, you know, because it's kind of like, it's great it's shit. It's more available and it's, it's available. A couple and hundred bucks cheaper. Yeah. Well, and then like Sabian, like, uh, I mean, that's great shit too. I'm trying to get, uh, I'm actually, trying, it's funny. I'm trying to trade a buddy, a set of hi-hats. I'm trying to get, I'm setting up like a, a lo-fi kit, you could kind of say. So it's like real dry symbols, uh, yeah. real, you know, like, so that's what I'm. I'm kind of working on that right now, doing something different with my 
my kits. I used a bunch of minor symbols in, in the studio on the record, and like they, I was always like not against them. Yeah, but like yeah. they, these sounded great. Yeah. So like because they, they, yeah. they, 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 they often they sell a lot of like lower entry level stuff that like yeah. kind of sounds like you know just in trash cans yeah but like like their hiring stuff sounds great yeah you know it really does um yeah and i was like that was like a new company that like i was like oh shit like i should check more of the stuff out well it's i mean a lot of people are using them and i mean they're yeah. they've you know come a long way they whatever 10 15 years they've they're, really they're like the around. kia symbols for a long time yeah yeah, yeah. we were talking about <laughs> kia on the way over. uh our friend uh if you go back a few episodes uh this cat named pat de leon from a prog rock band across uh into detroit okay. he's a killer drummer fantastic drummer one of the best drummers in the state in my opinion oh wow okay uh, he's great he's using these symbols he got hooked up with this kind of it's one of these like uh i don't know what you call it it's like an endorsement but it's you know not it's one of these weird they're they're a small company but they're like out of japan okay okay and uh I was asking him about it because I've seen him play a few times and the cymbals sound amazing. And I'm like, what the fuck are you using? <laughs> you know, so like he he walked me through everything that he uh, he's using now or whatever. And he's like kind of piecing in his kit of like, yeah, I got two of these crashes from them. And now I'm going to get their ride next or whatever it is, you know. But interesting. Uh, so you might want to check that out because like I was fucking impressed. What are they called? Do you know? I can't remember off the top of my head. Enough. Because there's a lot of these actually. No, there's a lot of up and coming symbol companies. Yeah. No, there's these low like low run smaller you know independent symbol but these guys are like out of japan he's like it takes like three months to get one here mm -hmm. you know kind of situation or whatever so but uh yeah i mean they, they still majority like like the way they make symbols is crazy yeah i mean like you yeah. got these crazy dudes in these huts with hammers <laughs> and some fire yeah. and like they're going to town on these things i yeah. mean like zilchin hey, just had their fucking 400th anniversary or 300th anniversary or 400th anniversary or something like that it's wild dude i mean <laughs> yeah. anybody at home like just youtube yeah. symbol making and you it's, will be blown crazy, away yeah. how they figure yeah. out how to do this stuff so uh i just got uh I don't know if you saw my new kit, my new, it, it's a DW still, but it's the fucking, uh, it's like the Vista light DW. Okay. Yeah. Uh, dude. It, and it's the sweet water one. It's smoked glass. They call it. So it's like the, I, I, I love what's the, stuff. what's the color of the, like the, the it, shell, the shell is like, a gray okay. so it's not it's so it's see-through yep. but it's like a gray and it almost has a bit of like a purple in it oh, and oh man, man i love sexy. it i love it dude yeah i'll show you pictures it, it'll be here soon i wish it was here it's, yeah uh looking for a new ride okay for <laughs> when i got that kit and I, I was looking for a 22 inch zildjian ping ride yeah okay like the a custom uh or an a and the a yeah you know and uh they they the quit making them in like 2012 or something but, okay okay they're hard to find. They're very sought after. They're hard to find. What I found was a 24 inch <laughs> and a sweet deal on it too. So I pulled the trigger on it and dude, it's, it's massive. Fucking, it's awesome. Whoa. It weighs 600 pounds. <laughs> you fucking set it there and it doesn't move. <laughs> you know? But you get it, a pig off that thing. Dude, it sounds fucking good because it's just, it's a little bit darker as you would expect. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's heavy as fuck. So that you can bell just, on that thing must it, just be a bell. And it, like, it, honestly, like I was like, oh, I need to actually hit this harder to get the sound out of it. You need a bigger stick. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, I was actually like, oh, I really need to smash on this thing. And it looks like, yeah, next time you come out, it'll be here. But it's a great symbol. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Legendarily used by the guy from Journey on all those Journey hits. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So fucking uh, separate worlds and all that stuff. Okay. That's all that 24 inch fucking. It's good enough for yeah. Journey. It's good enough for you. For real. <laughs> you don't see many 24 inch rides. Then. No, I that's mean, what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was weird. This guy was selling it on like marketplace because I was, it, you know, it was, and it was like way cheaper. And I'm like, something wrong with this, you know? Like I'm like, he's like, no, it's fine. Like so, I, I took it's a really chance. big. Yeah, exactly. I took a chance on it and I got it. And I fucking love it, man. Oh, it's cool. a fantastic symbol. Cost him yeah. four grand to get it shipped over here. Yeah, but for other real. Than that, hell of a symbol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm mostly using. Uh, I still like the A customs. Uh, so that's kind of so between that and like A's, you know, so that's kind of what my main kit's kind of decked out with, you know. It's like I love the A, I still got the A custom splashes I've had.
had forever. I still don't have any of their splashes. I like more than those. Uh, and I got like three sizes and the China. And they just like, to me, that's they what the sing. splash symbol sounds like, yep. dude. Yeah, I fucking love that shit. So, um, all right, man. I, we're getting a little uh, fucking deep into it here. So is there anything else? We need to talk about. I asked you. I know I covered everything I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Um, cover the shows you got coming up. Uh, it's very exciting. I'm. I'm really fucking. It's. It's awesome that you guys are doing so well. It, 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 like it. It's kind of mind blowing, and I mean that in the best way. It's like holy shit. You guys. Are, I'm watching. You playing Mexico City. You're flying in. I'm just like holy shit. It's, these guys are crushing it. So it's it's fucking cool, man. Thanks, dude. Like, yeah. We're, we're we're not young bucks anymore. Yeah. You know, so you kind of deserve it. It's been all this time, you know, like it's fucking badass, dude. Right. And like I'm 40 and like I'm the young guy. So right. like it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's great to see like these guys like still be able to carry the torch of ska, yeah, you know, yeah, worldwide yeah. and like sure. still have the enthusiasm, still making fucking new records you know, pushing your limits, getting fucking yelled at by the producer, you know, like <laughs> it's, you know, fucking, uh, you don't ever have to let that go, dude. You know, like, I think it's great that you're still doing it. I still, I'm, I, dude, I'm still drumming, you know? And that's yeah. like, you know, like I, I like, I'm happy to be able to say that I can still do that. And like, you know, it's definitely, Fuck yeah. you know, it's, I'm not rich and I'm not famous. Um, but you're playing the drums all over the world, dude. Dude, that's I still like all I, you've pe- ever dreamed about. People are still <laughs> you know? calling me for gigs, you yeah, know. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. Is like, yeah. I mean, like when it's all dead and gone. Like, I mean, yeah, I can still sell you a house, but like at least yeah. I have some tales to tell. Fuck like, yeah, dude. You know, so it's like, I don't know. Thanks for having me on. Like, I just like, oh I just, hell yeah, dude. You know, it's just like it's it's great to reconnect with like old friends. Yeah, for sure. Especially from the old hood, you know. Yeah, like, for sure. That's that's also yeah. like a fleeting thing, you know. So yeah, for real. That's been a big. Uh, big blessing of doing this is you start like reaching back out to people that you haven't talked to in a while. Like I haven't talked to you in a long fucking time, you know, like follow you online or whatever, but that's yeah. But like we haven't sat in the same room and had a conversation in for sure. 20 years probably, you know? Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe not that long, but like it's, close yeah, to been it a while yeah yeah so yeah man so fucking come back maybe fucking bring somebody else for whatever yeah we'll fucking we'll, we'll book something else also the studio is gonna be in operation here so whatever you ever need to fucking just cut something or fucking do whatever or just fucking hang out or whatever i can't wait uh, to check it out yeah man it's gonna be exciting i'm gonna have the whole downstairs like i show you it's gonna be all drums so you know <laughs> it's <laughs> what i'm doing you know so there's there's nate again he's peeking in the shit. windows hell yeah you guys up yet yeah there he is <laughs> and also the uh the pool and shit so it's gonna be the party party out here so yeah come in play a little drums do a little swimming fuck yeah <laughs> all right man thank you so much for coming it's been such a pleasure talking to you thanks guys thanks, all right, awesome. man. go fuck yourselves everybody peace